Hi, everybody. It's me, Jeff Gerstmann. Hello. I'm here with you right now to give you a bit of context about what you're about to see. Um, this is a archive of a live stream where I watched the Summer Game Fest kickoff hosted by the one and only Jeff Keighley. And then the Day of the Devs. Uh, over the course of this live stream, OBS crashed like six times. Uh, and so I was left with six, and now with this intro, seven uh, different recordings to stitch together. Um, I think that will be fine. I think it will be, not be a problem to stitch them. That's whatever. That's a command line. You just knock it out, bang. Um, but, you know, you will see dumb jumps in the video where the whole thing died, and I had to frantically um, deal with the task manager, and relaunch, and restream, and all, all that other stuff. So... Uh, if you're watching and you go like, man, what, I, what happened? Something crashed. So still working on hammering that out and figuring out what's going on. I'm over here watching suspiciously going like, did it crash again? No, we're, we're okay so far. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, I'll be talking over some, some other, you know, E3 ish streams over the next few days here. Uh, you can find out more details on that. Uh, I posted it on the Patreon page. So you can go to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. And there's a post there um, kind of detailing the schedule through, you know, like thir uh, Tuesday. Today is Thursday. Who am I? Where? What's going on? All right. Enough of this. Enough of me. On with the show. Enjoy. I have a good time. And I'll see you soon. Hello, everyone. Hi. It is time for the Summer Game Fest. Jeff Keeley's extravagant extravaganza. His cornucopia of video games. Uh, I am Jeff Gerstman. Hello, hi, welcome to the program. We are going to watch uh, Jeff Keeley's show and see what he has lined up. Uh, he has actually said a handful of things about what is going to be there and then there's been some other just rumors and leaks and stuff like that that i'll probably talk about here while we're waiting for him to get going in about 15 minutes um so here's what he has announced <clears throat> let's see uh, a new character reveal for street fighter 6 uh which i i have not had time to look at the leaks i guess that someone was saying that the full roster seemed to have leaked um, do you do Ken or do you do a new character here? I, you know, I don't know. I guess I haven't, I, I have not kept track of the, the leaks and stuff like that. Um, oh yeah. You want to ask some questions here? I mean, you know, I'm in the discord here, the discord, uh, sign up for Patreon. You get access. That's patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. If you want to know more about that. Uh, and then I'm in, in Twitch chat as well. How do I feel about Keely's coffee based lies? Asks, uh, Razzmatazz UK. It's, um, you know, you think you can trust a guy. You think this fine Canadian gentleman, surely he would not. Surely he could not do this and deceive us. Um, but it seems like perhaps maybe he has had some coffee before. I don't know. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people talk about morning coffee as like a euphemism and stuff like that. I'm over here. Drinking my limon pepino. Hello. Good morning, my limon pepinos. How's everyone doing out there? Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. That stuff happens. Um, let's see. So yeah, the Street Fighter new character reveal. Is that going to be Ken? Is that going to be someone new? I, I, I might focus on someone new. Like Ken obviously has a look this time around, and that sounds exciting, though I have not seen it for myself. Um, um, I've seen much of it. For, I, I ended up looking at the website. Anyway, um, I think you could go either way on that one. Uh, let's see. There's a Modern Warfare 2 thing here. Um, oh, the Twitch window for Achilles stream just flickered over here like it was about to start, and then it didn't. So I'm going to hit F5 on that just to make sure. Click here to reload player. There was a network error. There we go. Okay. So he's got his pre-show up and running on Twitch now. We'll swap over that in a little bit. Um... Modern Warfare 2, some kind of campaign level, I believe is what they're showing here. Sounds like that they pre-briefed some press about different aspects of the game. We'll talk more about that on the podcast on Tuesday. Um, 
I thought that the trailer they, they put out a trailer I believe that was yesterday uh, that they put out their their brief kind of like campaign reveal uh, that kind of confirms a lot of the, the Mexico um, maybe like cartel stuff um, that uh, that has been rumored for Modern Warfare 2 um, but really didn't get too deep on things it sounds like the stuff that they're talking to media about uh, is you know stuff around like ai and unifying the engine work between all the different call of duty games which is smart that's taken them forever to to do that um and that's pretty crazy but uh, good that they're getting there all that sort of stuff callisto protocol um we saw a little bit of that at the sony thing sounds like we'll see some more here one piece odyssey nightingale uh nightingale that's the is that this is the studio also named Nightingale? I forget the actual story. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, uh, which has looked neat when they've shown it. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to see more of that. Gotham Knights is said to be here. That Cuphead DLC, uh, the new real time strategy game from Frost Giant Studios, I guess, is going to make its debut here, uh, which I heard the tiniest bit about um, and really want to see it for myself. Um,. Marvel's Midnight Suns, Witchfire, which is like a guns and magic kind of guns and spells first person shooter. They are building it as a dark fantasy rogue light shooter from the creators of Painkiller, Bulletstorm, and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. You know, pretty much three of the same games there. Yeah, Painkiller, Bulletstorm, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. You know, cool, wicked combo based crazy shooters that people like. And also Warframe. Um, the little bit of which fire footage that I was looking at this morning, um, seemed pretty neat for, for whatever that's worth. Uh, and then I read, read rogue light and I was like, eh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I certainly, I, I don't know. I like, I like some, I like me some rogue lights. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not against it. Um, but there's a lot of them. At the end of the day, there's a lot of them, right? I mean, that's the the kind of the, the big issue there is there's just a lot of games where it's like, ah, you lost most of your stuff. You kept some upgrade currency and you can go back and be stronger and do your thing and now go back in and do it. Uh, there are, I guess, somewhat fewer of them uh, these days than there were over the last handful of years. But uh, I don't know. I guess maybe that shouldn't be a disqualifier, right? Because I, I actually do like a fair number of roguelites, but there is a part of me that's just like, I sometimes I just like authored content and cool levels and uh, scripted moments uh, are still cool. I guess you can, you, you know, you can script some moments in a roguelite. It's not to say or in a procedurally generated game, assuming it is that. Um, you can still do all that stuff. So, um, you know, again, not a disqualifier, but there's certainly a part of me that's just like, ah, roguelite shooter. I'm not sure that that's, um, I'm not sure. Or, or, or I'll, I'll need to see more, I guess, is the actual, uh, the, the actual answer there. Uh, let's see. Then, so that's the announced stuff. There has been some leaks as well. Um, we're a little under eight minutes from the start of the show. Um, so I guess probably I, it seems like the last of us part one for PlayStation five will be formally announced here that showed up on Sony's retail, like PlayStation direct website where they will sell you the, the PS five plates and, and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> um, and they also will sell you games. So they are rebuilding The Last of Us from the ground up for PS5 is what they say. The The text that was on that store page when it was viewable says, Enjoy a total overhaul of the original experience, faithfully reproduced but incorporating modernized gameplay, improved controls, and expanded accessibility options, plus feel immersed with improved effects and enhanced exploration and combat. Uh, they're also doing a $100... Uh, director's cut kind of version there called Firefly Edition that will include uh, Left Behind, the the DLC thing they did. Or was that standalone? Anyway, uh, it'll come in a steelbook. Is anyone still psyched about steelbooks in this day and age? 
Someone is. Someone's like, gotta get these steel books. Um, and also the Last of Us American Dreams issue one through four comics reprint with new cover art and early in-game unlocks. Um, how is that for the multiplayer stuff? Probably. Uh, the Forza Horizon expansion showed up um, on Steam with a Hot Wheels logo on it, seemingly implying that... Um, well, oh, there we go. Okay. We're, we're gonna, hmm, we're gonna give this, uh, Twitch stream from Keely another couple of minutes here. And then I'm going to bail for the YouTube embed because it just went down again. You know what? I'm just going to do that now while we're, while we still have time. So I don't miss any of the show. Let's see. Where's Keely's Twitter? Click YouTube. This is going to take a minute here to get the embed right. Okay. There it is. Wait, what? There we go. Okay. Um, easy peasy. Ooh, I've got to hide that YouTube chat. Because I do not, do not want to sit there and read it and go, ugh. Um, are we still getting some... Oh, is this... We're still getting a little bit of a mega answer there in the background here. I'll Maybe I'll... that off um okay now sorry let me reorganize my windows here there much better audio coming through how are you feeling about the volume of my voice to this sick music Left, left monitor, seem good, okay. Middle monitor, seem good, okay. All right, well, you know, when, when they get going, maybe we'll make some adjustments, because uh, I, I do have them turned down just a, a smidge here. I can ride that, I can ride that knob. Slider, I can slide that slider. Um. Okay, so back to it. Yes, the Forza um, uh, expansion showed up on Steam with a Hot Wheels logo on it. And so, you know, it would appear that the first Forza Horizon expansion is going to be Hot Wheels themed, which like, you know, yeah. Updating the Twitch title is a good idea. Oh, man, I got to. All right. You're right. You're right. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. When you're right, you're right. I just, I, I'm afraid to pop any windows up because everything's been so sketchy this morning. Okay. I thought I, it's the funny thing is I thought I set this last night, but what are you going to do? There we go. Okay. Um, would I happen to know how long this event is? I don't. Was he saying it was going to be like two-ish hours? I honestly, um, I honestly don't know. Um, so yeah, so Hot Wheels themed, like, it's kind of obvious, right? Like, they've been doing Hot Wheels themed DLC for Forza Horizon for a good long time. I guess the fucking good thing is like, those are good. So cool. Like, it, it's a little like, yeah. Yeah, I guess of course they're gonna do one of those, but you're like, oh wait, no, those those are those have all been at least like pretty good, so um, so no problem there. 
Uh, I saw some rumors that the Saints Row character creator maybe was going to launch today. Um, and then there was a Twitter hash flag for Boss Factory that um, that now has the Saints logo on it. You know, there's hash flags when you use a hashtag on Twitter and it shows a little icon next to it. I think they're abysmal. I fucking hate them. Um, but apparently they... Uh, uh, one of those with the, the Saints Row thing showed up. So that showed up like yesterday. And so that then you think like, well, maybe that means they're going to roll that out today. Obviously, like the character creation stuff has been the thing they've been taking the most flack over for a while now, which I, I always felt was a little weird because they need to make changes. That game looks good as is like, you know, they, they said like, oh, of course, you're going to be able to customize stuff. Like, why wouldn't you be? It's Saints Row. But people are like still like, Bah! I'm mad at the way the characters look because I'm such a dude. And it's like, fuck, man, come on, stop. Um, and then Overdose, which is supposedly the name of Hideo Kojima's next game or one of one of Kojima's next games. Uh, there was an article out there saying that that was out there and that there, uh, Tom Henderson had said that he had seen some footage known video game leaker, Tom Henderson, um, it said that he had, uh, that he had seen it and that then Kojima's people got in touch and said, could you take that story down? Which is always the right move. Um, and uh, that the footage seemed to show someone walking down a hallway with a flashlight. So, you know, a horror themed game. <laughs> Right? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that shows up here. Who the hell knows? That's, that would make a lot of sense. All right. Now's your time to punch out. This, you, if you are not into, we're gonna now we're going to really start cursing. This is an official co-stream. I filled out the form and then didn't use any of the assets. This is Summer Game Fest, a live showcase of what's next in the wide, wide and world Terry of video games. And Terry, go. Should, I, should I leave the... Los Angeles. So whether you're streaming from home or watching inside an IMAX theater... That's me. Welcome to our showcase. We're watching event. on JMAX right now. next few hours, we'll give you updates um, on the game. Let me know if you think I should turn captions off. By special developer guests, and yes, have a few surprises along the way, too. If I can. Now, what can. I love about this show is that it's a true cross-industry showcase. Whether you play on Xbox, PC, PlayStation, huh. Switch, or mobile, we'll have games for you. There we it go. doesn't matter your platform of choice. We're all here to come together as one community that simply loves the art of amazing video games. The biggest this is Keely cranked all the way up. Here, like Call of Duty. You'll so get let me know what you think. New worlds, new teams, and we'll make room for small independent developers who we think deserve the spotlight too. If we do this Plus right, minus will hopefully okay. you'll yeah, discover yeah, a few new games to put on your wish list. And even if you don't get every announcement that you desire, and let's face it, you're not going to get everything today, but we've got a lot of great stuff. That's not so working on the pop out. Started. Over 30 years ago, Capcom Street Fighter hit arcades, and ever since, this legendary Japanese okay. fighting game series has continued to evolve. Street Fighter 6 is coming in 2023, and right now, we're excited to officially confirm a character coming to the game and show you the exclusive first gameplay footage. Enjoy. Very fast into the thing and not a big transition into talking about games. This is just like intro, then here's a game. Okay, all right. You will know what hits you. That's me, America's Hero is back. On. Let's get this mission started. Yeah, since it's the just the auto-generated captions, I am gonna turn them off. This will be a good fight. Got you in my sights. His freaking overalls. Yep, okay. So, yeah. So he's got that. Oh, gosh. 
the top of Guile's hair. <laughs> I'm just on another level. Oh, this fucking goatee. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> sure. All right, Guile. That's a good looking Guile. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some Brock Lesnar vibes on that face, I guess. It's all about the comb. All right. Next, it's time for a brand new game announcement here at Summer Okay, Game he seems Fest. a little louder now. Maybe Check they... this out. Maybe they made some adjustments. Why is no one why is no one there to say world premiere? Like what are we even doing? Sergeant Leo Alvarez of the CM Leth Recon Squad. Our mission was to enter the Tantalus base, locate the commsat relay, and bring it back online. Thank you for typing world premiere in the chat. The relay. But there was a problem. Get that door closed now, Private. In the hall. Close that, Close that gate. Nothing gets in here. It's not an. Make it. The least is a one piece. Willis, take the lead. Looks like hits for small arms fire. <laughs> what makes you say that, dude? It looks what fine. It was oh, this ain't good. Kind of evil. And it found us first. Mm hmm. Okay. What the? This wasn't human. Retreat! Retreat! Is that a cyber alien? Shouldn't have given them visors. They should have put freaking Oakleys on the aliens or something cool, you know? I know what I saw in there. But I know when I close my eyes, I still see it. Now everyone's dead. And someone needs to know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They should have just led with that <laughs> the part where it's like, it's not another fucking co-op first person shooter. It's not another, you know, that was aliens. Dark. Thank Descent you. Okay. In 2023 to console and PC next two years ago at the game. Award, <laughs> that two seconds of just like, protocol. boom, look at this. You're like, Oh, great. I'm that turned me around completely. I'm just like, Today, great. I another dumb fucking aliens game. Like, oh, wait. Oh, right. oh yeah. Play alongside its creator, Glenn Schofield. But first, here's the I can turn my mic down. Schofield cut of the brand new trailer with a little more gore. But I don't think I can turn Keeley up anymore uh, because I've got him pegged. Uh, anyway. Take a look outside. Did you know that they call Callisto the dead moon? Dead. Just like you would have been if I hadn't. Oops. Out of that rack. Okay, it's turned all the way up. So Everything is turned all the way up, except for me right now. now. So that's your not much I can do to make him louder. You gotta let that go. Because your new life is entirely in my hands I'm just trying to give you a chance mm -hmm. okay At rebirth that's you gotta hmm. 
Got a little thing. You got a little thing here. <laughs> you know... Call me an idiot. I just love that last part. I feel like I could use a little more glow and stuff on your character's back. A little more... Every time. Um... Okay, yep. Give me more stomping. Give me a dedicated stomp button I can use to stomp corpses for like an hour and a half. What do you, what do you want out of a Dead Space style game? Just stomping. Just stomping. Welcome to your new home. That looks neat. In my mind, it's still set in the PUBG universe. That's right. We know what you wanted to see. And I refuse to now, Glenn Schofield, refuse anything, Glenn. just uh, any first of all, reports to the contrary. This game looks absolutely incredible. And I got to say, the fact that you have built this team, this studio, new IP, shipping this December, all in COVID, blows me away. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having us. I really do appreciate it, Jeff. Um, and, you know, for a second, just give me a second. You know, I want to thank you uh, for all you've done for the game industry uh, all these years, man. I, I think I've known you like 16, 17 years now. Yeah. And uh, um, you've been an ambassador. Um, you've amplified new games, new studios. And uh, I, I just wanted to thank you. I really do oh, appreciate well, it. They did, they did drop the PUBG me, stuff. It's not, yeah, I, I it's not, it's not in that. the thank PUBG so universe much, anymore. Yeah, it's so fun to do these shows. And to show this game, so people saw the trailer, but what I'm so excited today is that you just brought a raw gameplay sequence. This game is in development, and people are going to be blown away, I think, when they see it. But tell us a bit about what are we going to see today. Yeah, we got a couple minutes of, uh, like you said, like raw gameplay. Um, it's two segments in the first half of the game. Uh, one is a med bay. Another one is a power station. I don't have a jacket like see, that. Uh, what am I doing? Some new enemies, some brutality, some uh, just about everything. I don't have a cool We're jacket like that. a new uh, weapon called the grip. Okay. It's uh, like a gravity gun, but it picks up the enemies, and it shoves them into giant fans. It rips them apart. It's great. <laughs> and, uh, and then check out the... Uh, the nice ending we have where we, uh, you know, we usually will kill our main character, Jacob, yeah. and in a very unique way. And uh, uh, just for a second, I, I want to thank the team, man. Like you said, through COVID, through everything else, the dedication, the hard work. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Glenn, I got to say, again, you know, what you guys are shipping this year, this looks like a world-class next-gen game. Uh, it's, it's rare that teams are bringing something out like this. Are we doing a jacket year, off? And, uh, Wait. Let's let the footage speak for itself. Uh, Keeley versus uh, Vince Schofield. Who's got a better jacket? Okay, no. Now seeing the gameplay, I'm perfectly happy with the amount of lights and health information conveyed on the back of that dude's neck. That's totally fine. Awesome. I wonder what happened here. No way of knowing. Just tripping out. Anyway. I don't... Is, is anyone tired of the whole, like, look at this reconstructed scene method of, like, environmental storytelling that The Division did a ton of and all that stuff? Is that is that super done? Yeah? I'm getting a lot... I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Seeing a lot of yeses across both chats here. Impactful weapon noises go a really long way. Yes, 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 
Fucking don't fucking stop. Get your Callisto credits and smash that fucker. God damn it. This is my level 5 armor that looks a lot like an Xbox. Has way more inventory space. It's awesome. Pre-order now. Alright, yeah. Yep, sure. That looks fun. You know, games get optimized. Presumably, the final version will run better than that, right? I mean, you gotta give it to devs that are willing to just say, like, here's the state of the game when we did... Oh, Jesus Christ. Well... Oh, my God. That just happened. All right, moving on. This October, Call of Duty Modern of Warfare God. 2 arrives. Don't fall. Infinity War Don't get that jacket wet. Turning to its roots for a modern day action game. And today we're about to show you the world premiere of its gameplay we're with a <clears> level <throat> playthrough. To tell us more, world. let's head to the port of Long Beach to check in with Johanna Ferris, the head of Call of Duty. The head of Call of Duty is such a weird phrase. <laughs> Hi, everyone. In 2019, Modern Warfare changed everything and on october 28th we usher yeah. in a new yes era it did of call of it, duty with the launch of modern it made War me think we are back hey we maybe this series is not dead she's right the entire team that Price, modern warfare reboot was Gaz, really really good Soap, alejandro and of course ghost we needed a stage big enough to debut call of duty in a whole new way inspired by the world we're about to enter oil rigs cargo ships and staggering odds are just the beginning. Here is Modern Warfare 2. There's pretty good multiplayer levels that have an oil, like an oil rig kind of theme, right? I mean, that's... Well, they sure did make a Call of Duty campaign, right? <laughs> yep, yeah. Mm hmm. even know you know none of these people have the word follow written above them what am what you know what do i even do here it's 
very good sound. Like, the, that was the, one of the things about that Modern Warfare reboot, is it felt like they finally got really good audio. You know, Battlefield has had such great audio for such a long time, and Call of Duty always felt like a step behind, and they... Just Molotovs just hanging out on top of the... Yeah, I, what oil rig wouldn't have a bunch of Molotov cocktails just fucking sitting around, right? This seems bad. You should shoot the missile. You don't know that. There could be another guy right there. Actual, this is Shadow One. Make it secure. I'm moving on the container now. Roger that. Confirm when the objective is neutralized. Open. Where are the controls? On that damn ship. Actual, we got a problem. This is. You should knock it up, push it over. Stop that launch. Stop, stop that launch. Come on, son. Get out there and stop that launch. Oh heck. Sure. Why not? Let's have ourselves a gunfight. <laughs> Missile controls are on the bridge. Yeehaw. Have the Let's have ourselves a gunfight. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess. I'll tell you, this looks more exciting than anything that's been in a Call of Duty campaign in the last two years. So, good, because that say you know, say what you <laughs> say what you will about the war crimes of the Modern Warfare reboot and how it depicted uh, the different uh, uh, factions in that conflict, but. Uh, It was a very fun video game. You should shoot all those guys. I mean, I would think if I were a person that had controls to launch a missile and then there was a bunch of people on the boat trying to kill me and they were getting closer and closer, I would just fucking launch the missile because then they would turn around and go, oh, fuck, and then I would have some time to go do something else. Uh, That's just my tactical mind, you know. Frame me there on the water. But hey. Whoops, it's not here either, and then the missile takes off, right? I mean, that's the... Okay, I guess we don't get to know how that ends, huh? Pre-order now.
now and get early access to the open beta. It's a video game I will certainly play, and like I said, I, I think that that just even that That's bit looks significantly better than now, the last couple of campaigns. Johanna, great um, to see you. How's everything? It's great. Thanks. Uh, great to have you with us, and also Jeff from uh, Infinity Ward. So. We saw the first gameplay. Thanks for that extended sequence. Looks incredible. Uh, Jeff, tell us a bit about that mission. Uh, where is that set in the game? What are we seeing? There? They're on a boat Absolutely. and then an oil rig. So, um, Thanks all, for asking, Jeff. Really it's great to, to be back. here. Uh, Captain John Price and uh, uh, Gaz uh, Garrick. Um, you know, they're not re they're not actually in what we just saw today, but uh, they're returning members from 141. And then the other two characters uh, that were you may recognize from the older franchise that we're reimagining are uh, Simon... Ghost Riley, and uh, of course, uh, Soap John McTavish. Um, and then a couple other new characters in here that we're really excited uh, that we got to uh, create for this game. Um, first, uh, Commander Philip Graves, and uh, Mexican Special Forces uh, Colonel Alejandro. And Alejandro, I gotta say, we're, it's a character we're really excited about. He's a guy who's super capable, and a guy uh, who's just as important as Task Force 141. Um, but as far as the level's concerned, um, you know, this, I, I got a shout out to, to IW. You know, this was tr a tremendous collaboration across all of the, the different uh, disciplines. As you saw, everybody coming together, some really uh, motivated devs here. And, uh, you know, you saw the, the wind and the uh, You gotta figure that the Infinity awesome Ward would be very motivated tech, because, like, is like I said, I think that that Modern Warfare reboot so got. So excited for Task Force One for One. Okay. Um, Warzone coming to mobile as well for players on. Perhaps the go. we're back up. We're, we're on Steam. That's frustrating. Know, so it's just a big moment, and there's going to be a lot more to. Yeah, come OBS crashed. Months to follow. Well, thanks everyone for we leave, we gotta going fucking nuts in chat. And Warzone too. I know we just you know we're uh, showing gameplay here on this, but letting me know. Anything? There was a little bit. Seems like there was a little bit of a tease maybe in the trailer yesterday. Or yeah, when we're seeing that from the community, community, we love when the fans can pick up some things. Uh, so I'm honored to share this very first look. Okay, perhaps we're back again. We'll see. Sorry about that. That's uh abject chaos happening right here. Anyway, I don't know how that'll cut together when we cut it all together, because uh, the recordings probably got uh, trampled a little bit there, but you maybe missed a little bit of Modern Warfare 2. Or there are discussion about Modern Warfare 2. And now I'm completely... Oh, hey, wait, hang on. That Conrad. Yep. Flashback two. I'm gonna call. We're gonna go with flashback two on this. That was announced. They. I feel that was announced, right? All right. Let's turn back time. Back in 2017, we announced Witchfire at the Game Awards. Almost five years later, I am so if I could turn to back to time. put together an in-depth look at the gameplay of this dark fantasy first-person shooter, which will enter early access soon. I am so excited to play this, and I bet you will be too after you see this. Just over here massaging my gun. High mobility, that's cool. That guy's on fire. He seems unhappy about it. that huh little gems Is that going, that's going to turn into something right that's you wouldn't he's not just going up to collect it if they're going to cut back to it this many times in the trailer something bad's happened okay all right yeah you gotta cleanse that what do you gotta oh 
Okay. Early access soon. I thought they said they were out in Q4, which I guess is a not. I guess that's soon. I guess that's soon. Okay, next up comes an ambitious new game from a new independent studio in Europe starring some very familiar names. Enjoy this world premiere new game announcement. Just banging them out. Boom, boom, boom. Officer Taylor Medlog, 29. Today, um, I can't believe what I saw. This car had fucking six wheels on it. I cannot fucking believe it. Solace. Everything okay in there? Solace. Oh, is this, this is the new Dragon Age, right? <laughs> we brought it to the Mass Effect universe. My pit boy is ringing. A lot of very annoying fake tinnitus sounds. Something is going on here. And I need to find out what it is. Fort not oh. It's interesting that they're putting the voice actor names at the top, like like a movie presentation. That's something brand new, and look who it is. Troy and Roger in person. Guys, uh, this is so fun, the fact that you're working on a game together. What a cool team up. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Good to be here. I got to ask you guys, uh, who are your characters in this game? Well, uh, I get to play a character named Wyatt Taylor, who's a medical officer who's stationed at this uh, base, Fort Solace. And uh, it's the epicenter of this mystery that we'll discover and uncover as we go through the game. And of course, my character will be at times in opposition with Roger's character. The battle we've been waiting to see. <laughs> Every once in a Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. And by the way, Jeff, this looks awesome, man. Yeah, man. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having us. It's, it's, it's so great that you're in another game. We, I mean, it's feeling like this is your first game since yes. Red Dead 2. One of the first major yeah. ones for a while. And I play a character by the name of Jack Leary. He's a maintenance engineer on a remote Martian mm -hmm. mining post. Okay. His job is to make sure that none of the equipment breaks down while it's on their graveyard shift. Uh -huh. The graveyard shift meaning Mars and Earth are really far apart from each other and their orbits around the sun. So help is not a simple call away. Uh, I got to ask, I, I think a lot of people will see this thing and they'll probably wonder, you know, it's a new team, right? Uh, new, you know, independent studio in Europe that's making this, but with huge production values. I'm curious, like, how did you guys get attached to this? Tell us a bit about the background. I, I will say that 2020 to me was the most impactful year for games. It was the first, I mean, obviously we had this unprecedented event with the pandemic and that forced the way that we- I might say 1998 did some stuff. Also the way this I might function. say like 1980. also brand new consoles. 81. Tools that were being made available that were leveling the playing field between yeah. the AAA studios and the indie studios of the AAA studios. And so, just like anybody else, we got reached out. Uh, James Tinsdale with this brand new studio said, we'd like for you to uh, consider being a part of this game. And he walked me through a very brief description of what the experience was going to be like. And in the very beginning, he said, it's, we want this to feel, it's a, it's a tight thriller. We want it to feel like Dead Space meets uh, Duncan Jones Moon. And I was like, sign me up. I'm into that, absolutely. And full like performance capture and everything. Ah, right? yeah. Absolutely. New studio, brand new energy, and of course, I get to work with one of the best in the business. Jeff. And me. I get the privilege <laughs> Who's the other of getting guy? to see this guy and watch him in action. Uh, I know I love to work and I love the challenges and all the new innovations that this medium provides to performers. We can't wait to show you what we've been working mm -hmm. on. Yeah. I think yeah. it's gonna knock Yeah, I guess I've seen off. some of the behind the scenes and the performance capture, Unreal Engine 5. I mean, this is, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Can you give us a hint about the, the gameplay? Like, what are we gonna do in this game? Yeah, the verbs are always shoot. important. So we're gonna let <laughs> the game speak for itself. We'll be showing you more later on. But uh, this is a game where you as the player, you're gonna be exploring, you're gonna be discovering. Like we said, it's a very tight thriller. So you're moving very fast paced through this world, there'll be multiple locations, multiple ways for you to traverse, which we're excited to show you about. Uh, it would be cool if they showed this the, stuff, the but you know, a huge element to this. The, they, it's they didn't waste probably not uh, quite any, there yet. Any resources on the, the performance for sure. I got to tell one quick story, yeah. if I can. Um, it was one of our favorite moments. Um, 
there is a lot of action in this game, and that was at the, the, the forefront of this. And to speak to the performance capture aspect, we brought in an incredible, I gotta give him a shout out, uh, to Nathaniel, our stunt coordinator, who walked us through and really approached this in a completely different way than anything I've ever done before. And he says, I want to know the story of this fight. And so mm -hmm. Raj and I sat down, we said, these are where our characters are. And he goes, give me one hour and I will come back to you with the story of this fight. And after an hour, he comes to us and he goes, it was like a, like a recovery program, it was 12 steps. And he walked us through this incredible fight. And I was, I, about halfway out, uh, halfway through, I started tuning him out. And I was like, hey man, I just want to let you know, I've got no ego about this, but I can do a lot of things, but I, I can't do this. And he grabbed me by my shoulders and he says, oh, you can, you will, and it's going to be <laughs> glorious. And we did. And we it's did. It's like a dance. There was a lot of trust, and it worked. Huh. Yeah, I mean, we're big, excited big about stunts. It, yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, this is so cool to see. Is it in independent? I think that's interesting because it, it, like, they're not really talking a lot about, Troy other Rock than Keeley kind of saying, right, hey, it's a new independent, right. studio, new independent well, studio, new independent studio. Like, the they're really talking about, like, the almost like an L.A. production aspect of it. Which will feature a musical score by industry legend Mick Gordon. This one is going to grab okay. you, and we are so honored to I'm ready to be grabbed by Mick Gordon. It's good looking rock. <laughs> A lot of space. Space, very, have you heard of this? Space? People are very big on it right now. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hang on, I'm just, I'm defending. <laughs> This PVF. I need this monitor. I need to hook my monitor. I need to hook my mister up to this monitor, and I'll kill anyone that gets in my way. Oh, yeah, well. I'm a robot man. Doesn't that look great? That sure, was yes, it does. That was routine Xbox and PC. It was first announced a decade ago and is now officially back. I can't No shit. <laughs> now it's time to check in with a very special guest who's been in his fair share of video games, including most recently Fortnite as the foundation. Oh, okay. Dwayne Johnson, welcome to Summer Game Fest. How and are that's you? That's Spy Hunter sequel. What's up, everybody? I'm here live, What's definitely up? right now. And what is up to the... Summer Game Fest audience is live streaming right now. Do they pay him on Cameo to do this? Everybody inside the epic IMAX theaters. Dwayne Johnson here coming at you from my Iron Paradise, the very hot and sweaty and smelly Iron Paradise, uh, powered by, of course, Zoa Energy, the number one fastest growing energy drink in the game. You guys know me uh, by a lot of nicknames. The Rock, La Roca in Spanish, uh, Uncle Handsome, Sexiest Man Alive, uh, Big Drink Energy. Always room for a cheesy joke. There's always room for the extra large cheese pizza, especially when I'm delivering and I deliver them often. Uh, you guys also Gosh. know me as the greatest and most electrifying you surprise in gaming. You could have done a second happened. take of this. You know me as the foundation. And I got to tell you guys, uh, number one, thank you so much for the crazy response of me becoming the foundation. But also, I got to say that, you know, I've had such a pleasure uh, working with um, Epic Games and uh, the teams over there. And we cannot wait to show you. I am interested in trying the Rock's energy beverage. I have yet to see it uh, also available for sale in my area. So. Black Adam, as millions of you know around the world who know the Black Adam mythology, he is ruthless. He is unstoppable. And for those who don't, I always like to say a quick tutorial is this. Um, Black Adam has the powers of Superman. But the only difference, well, there's a few differences. But one of the biggest differences is Superman's weakness is magic. 
And Black Adam's, one of his superpowers is magic. So you do the math. Uh, October 21st, I cannot wait for you guys to see Black Adam around the world in theaters only. And you guys will finally see the hierarchy of power in the DC universe change. Uh, it has been an honor to become Black Adam and it was a, it is a role that's in my DNA and that what I was we, born to play. I was born to play the man in black. What, and I'm honored to show it to you this guys. Is still, this is still going. So until then, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, yeah. stay focused, huh, mm. keep having fun, keep kicking ass, uh, enjoy your gaming, and I'll see I you will enjoy my gaming, Dwayne. Black Adam. Black Adam. What have your powers ever given to you? Nothing but hearty. I was a slave until I died. Then I was reborn a god. Over fire! Now, I kneel before no one. You can be the destroyer of this world. Or you can be its savior. Okay. That's up to you. Behind you! Did he just catch a rocket? He got a rocket. All black anything. You know my press code. <laughs> sure. I sure, I guess. Sure. I don't know, but third mob slot! <laughs> Rashi get back together? What the f Outriders was totally all right. I, I, uh, I don't know that I need any of it. Any more of it, rather. Um, Yeah, looks neat. I, I don't know. Like they announced this a while back, and you know, looking at it, you're like, yeah, sure. That's Outriders is fine. Relatively unremarkable, I might say, but like a decent shooter at a time when there were not a other bunch of other games coming out. And I think it was a good game. Pass, it was a great Game Pass game. Um, but. Uh, The end game. What? This is a little, uh, I mean, hey, you go to N Nintendo and you say, you got anything? You got anything for my show? And they go, yeah, I mean, maybe we... Or is this like our, our mid... middle of the show ad block kind of thing? So I uh, unplugged monitor three and uh, everything seems stable so far. I am also a Fall Guys man now. We are running. We are loving this. I reinstalled this and played it a little bit recently after they announced the free to play stuff, but before it had launched and 
there, there were a lot of it seems like they've added a lot of that a lot to that game since launch which was the last time i had played it and it was nice to see some new areas and, and stuff like that um i still wish that the controls were maybe a little more gang beast c in terms of that kind of floppy that was chaos so fun to see courage and ray in that fall guys piece and you can play and download fall guys for free starting what? june 21st across all platforms including nintendo switch xbox pc and playstation all right back to another new game announcement we're going to announce a brand new game and universe from a new team of legendary developers check this out legendary i'm ready Okay, yeah, this is the... Yeah, here we go. So, uh, this is... Some of these folks are ex-Blizzard. I don't know if they all are or not. Um, like I said, I heard a tiny, tiny little bit about this game. Wasn't able to... Last couple weeks been pretty busy, so I wasn't able to... <laughs> to uh, hear about the rest of it. Signal's breaking up. Command, I'll do one last scan. See you soon. Over. Okay, hurry. Okay. Command, I may be on to something. This is going to go poorly for her. I suspect. I have it, command. Repeat, I have it. Oh. Mission accomplished. Maybe this will go fine for her. Oh, maybe not. So my understanding is this is a uh, real-time strategy game. Goliath online, indeed. Jacked up and good to go. Glad you could make it. We gotta move. Now. There's a storm coming. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of detail there. And yeah, Stormgate is very much like. There you have it, Tim. Congratulations. You roll the dice on Stormgate the. Stormgate is real. We have a name and some details. Video game. Uh, so first of all, Put congratulations the video game on naming dice. We're so excited about the return of RTS, brand new uh, franchise. What is a Stormgate, though? What is right, a Stormgate? So Stormgates are portals that open during a massive solar storm that unleash the infernal host on future Earth. Okay. Uh, and we saw some hints of some... I mean, you know, you guys coming from Blizzard and StarCraft, everyone wants to know about... Rift the vibe of that uh, uh, trailer is almost like... Yeah, we're unveiling our first two factions. Maybe a little like Warcraft versus Warcraft. Starcraft. So human Resistance, and we saw an archaeologist from the Human Resistance in that intro cinematic uh and then maybe also i'm reaching the there hosts who are these demon-like monsters who come from another world diablo versus starcraft i don't know about especially your background pedigree of the team of you know where do you want to push the rts genre it's something we've all loved for decades but you know opportunity for a lot of innovation um i know you're going to show us i think some some hints of where you're going to go Im image wise with the actual gameplay made in unreal engine but any sense of what you want to do for the gameplay in this game 
Absolutely. I, but the first thing I want to say is we are very consciously trying to stay true to what players already love about RTS. Um, where we're really trying to push the genre and be innovative, first off, approachability. Um, for one thing, we're free to play, uh, but no oh. pay to win, no NFTs, nothing like that. Um, just to I did not know that, that the game was going to be free to get players in. But we're also really trying to be a lot more social. Um, so you'll be able to play the campaign cooperatively. We've got three player open ended co-op um, and we've even got three versus three for competitive multiplayer. But of course, we've also still got one V one competitive. And as a little surprise, I think we've got some first kind of work in progress images uh, from the game, right? Yeah, these are still very much still uh, being worked on, but some shots of uh, actual assets that we're building in Unreal Engine hmm. 5. Wow, well, I, I, I love it. Now, 2023, you said for the beta, so people can sign up now, get it's, ready. It's nice and to see I'm like a bunch so of that there is a, a different UE5 games RTS and like people making different styles of game. I think everyone saw all the realistic so assets and they were just like, yeah, uh, thank you so much. For it's all going to be announcement today on first Gameplay. person, third thank person, so whatever, whatever. Really cool. But it's kind of awesome. cool to see, right, like, hey, here's a Stormgate. Keep an eye out for it. Now here's an RTS in UE5. That's cool. I'm excited to share with you. High Water. Check this one out. Bum, 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 Good morning, bum, high water bum. dwellers. High water pirate radio keeping you in the know with our flow. Alphaville authorities continue to deny false rumors that Alphaville elites are planning to evacuate to Mars. True or not, the one thing we can't deny is that the world ended on a sunny day. The world ended on a sunny day. Boys and girls surfing in the bay. Kids clamor than the park. No one suspected the coming dark. The wave was coming, but the sky was clear. Soundtrack by Alphaville. Wait. It's a cool looking boat. I'm going to make a song based on the song. I'm going to make a, a video game based on the Lana Del Rey song, Diet Mountain Dew. That's my world what premiere announcement. What a breathtaking trailer. High Water is an adventure strategy game set in a world ravaged by extreme climate change. Adventure strategy. Speaking of the world around us, the conflict in Ukraine is not far from anyone's mind, and it's impacted the development of games, including Replaced from Sad Cat Studios, a Belarusian studio with devs from Belarus and Ukraine. The team had long hoped to reveal a new trailer here today, but were understandably unable to complete it in time. Guys, I just want to say we're thinking of you and all the developers impacted by the conflict and hope to be able to share your work at a future show. All right, our next game is an official selection of the Tribeca Games <sighs> Festival. It's American Arcadia, where you play Trevor, whose life is being televised with the viewing population constantly voting you up or down. When you become unpopular, oh, no. you need to start running for your life. Check this out. Picture a city where technology and science go hand in hand with fun and entertainment. I will, I will My not. My grandfather, Elijah Walton, had a dream to build the city of tomorrow. That dream is now a reality. And that city is Arcadia. A 43 square mile metropolis where each and every citizen enjoys a life of luxury and comfort. It's a nice look. Broadcast live 24 hours a day, seven days a week on every digital platform. American Arcadia. Control, subject on the run on camera 4025. Interrupt broadcast immediately. Listen to me. We can't allow Trevor Hills to escape under any circumstances. Trevor. 
Trevor, can you hear me? Be careful, and don't make a sound. Don't worry. I'm going to get you out of there. That's a neat look. That's a, yeah. I don't know. Apparently we've made it to the beach. Next up is a sequel we've all been anticipating for Jeff, a long Jeff, you built time. this beach. You told paradise, people to build this beach. You can't craft wise about your beach After many that you years built. Of rumors, we finally get an update on you didn't just look up and go, oh, what? Sequel. Mm hmm okay I like that we're getting a lot of stylized looks at least I think some of these styles are maybe a little overdone uh, but I don't know a variety of art styles in gaming as opposed to everyone just making their like military man video game Let's go as real as we can. Like, yep, make another goat game. So is it multiplayer this time? Was it multiplayer? I, yeah, I don't know. Three. God, I forgot there was a two. Is that bad? Like I was like, oh. Okay. There you have it. That was Goat Simulator 3, and it's coming later this year to the Is that the joke? Game okay, there was no two? Okay, now, sure. Last year, okay. Marvel and 2K announced Marvel's... It worked for the Star Naked Gun. ...tactical RPG from Firaxis so, I mean, not... the studio behind XCOM and Civilizations. Heroes from the Avengers and X-Men cross over with supernatural ones like Blade and Ghost Rider for a battle against Lilith, the mother of demons. Today, <laughs> we've got a look at some new folks set to join the battle. We can't stream Metallica. Damn it. Lars is going to kick this door down and go, fuck you, Napster, and then clock me in the head with a drum. Drum. Have they said what this game is? I forgot what Midnight Suns was. It's this is like their like XCOMish. This is the Firaxis game, right? Okay. Yeah, XCOM with cards, right? Okay. Yes. They remove the card. Okay. Typical Parker luck. I'm gonna need some backup. Some motherfuckers always are trying to turn based strategy uphill. Is that the. <laughs> silly. Fucking silly. Metallica recorded this in a three sided ring. as per their contract. Okay. For a game that's out in October, I would have liked to have seen some part of a video game or work well it did that one time 
Cut it off! That was Midnight Suns, and now we're moving on to the wonderful world of Cuphead, the delicious last course. And you, can you believe it? We're only a couple weeks away from Cup playing the whole weeks ahead. Course DLC. <laughs> you so know what I mean? Right? Cuphead. Right? Joining me now is Maya Maldenhauer Woo! from Studio MDHR. So first of all, Maya, it's really coming? It's really coming June 30th on all major platforms. We are thrilled. Well, I'm so thrilled, too, that uh, I think all the fans oh, can't believe that this is here. And I've been... Lucky enough to play this actually on my Steam Deck uh, last week, and you guys gave me a copy. This, I, I can't. People are not going to be ready for how amazing this looks, and the backgrounds, and what you guys have done. I feel like you've you've amped up. Obviously, the gameplay it's difficult as we would expect, but the visual look, you guys have taken it even to the next level, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah, we absolutely did. I couldn't pinpoint one thing that we're proud of in this because we really honed our craft. Because we really phoned it in. The <laughs> animation, the backgrounds, no. the music, gameplay design, um, and of course, a new playable character, Miss Chalice. I'm very proud of her. It's cool to see this finally coming out. Um, it's, it's always looked cool. It feels like it's its own I wonder how it will be balanced difficulty-wise. It is, it is, definitely. Yeah, you just get, get on the island, and, and there you are off to this new uh, new territory, which is amazing. Yeah, it's our biggest island yet. Super-sized bosses, lots of secrets to discover. Um, don't let any rock go unturned. Yes, and lots of challenge ahead. Well, I know you brought, I, I know you want, you don't want people to necessarily ha have too much spoiled about the game, but you brought a little something. People a little play, something, right? yeah. It's uh, brand new gameplay footage of one of our new bosses, Mortimer Freeze. It takes place in an icy arena um, and features some of my personal favorite um, attacks and transformations. We... Hope everyone enjoys it. All right, let's check it out. Cuphead, the delicious last course. Next file. Thanks. Yes, looks great. Looks like Cuphead. Looks great. Like what? Yep. Looks like Cuphead. Looks awesome. What? I feel like you could walk out on that stage and be like, hey, motherfucker, we made more Cuphead. And people would be like, yes, good, great, awesome. Yes, you made more Cuphead. New character, sure, yes, new fights, sure. It's very nice. Looks very nice. That does not look easy. Now, if you want even more Cuphead, and who doesn't, tomorrow we will show you an exclusive look at season two of the Cuphead show when I co-host Netflix's Geek Week, which will include new show and game announcements. It streams at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And that's not all. There's more summer game fest. And that's not all. Oh, he's back on his island. Next, but now it's Day of the Devs indie cooler. Showcase with I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine, then Devolver's Marketing Countdown to Marketing. Tomorrow, after Geek Week, there is the Epic Game Store Showcase at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, with news on Rocket League and the Tribeca Game Showcase. And Sunday, don't miss the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase with a look at the future of Xbox and Game Pass. Now we have some exciting news for Nintendo Switch and PC fans about Neon White, a game where you play an assassin from hell who slays demons mm. for the chance to ascend to heaven. <laughs> to heaven. This looks extremely cool. We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. This also looks like a game I'll be effing terrible at. You got ten days here. You day, you mission from old Mikey. You think you can win me over by showering me with gifts? Uh, good thinking. That's soon. Machine Girl, that's also cool. 
We've shown you lots of games today made by huge teams. Now it's time for a game made by a single father in Poland. Over the past year, he's brought on some help to bring his oh, vision right. for a fast-paced oh, he's brought on some help. game, Midnight Fight Express, to life. Let's take a look. Wait, made by a single person? And he's brought us some help. Hang on. Hang on. You know the saying, get knocked down, get up again, that whole spiel. Well, it's time, partner. Time to rise up. Together. Yep. This looks pretty good. It's happening. The big guy's actually going through with it. While I sat at his side, see lives as dollar signs. Had the stink of corruption all over me. And you know who put it there? Nah, not him. Me. Well, I ain't wearing it anymore. And neither are you. Tonight, we wash this whole damn city down. August. That's also quite soon. Such a cool game. And I'm happy to announce that a PC demo of this game is going live right now on Steam and will be part of the Steam Next Fest next week. I really want more playable games to get in the hands of you guys at home, and that's one of them. Check it out. All right. Joining me now is Megan from Digital Extremes to talk all things Warframe. Megan, how you doing? I'm so good. My fellow Canadian. I know. We got a lot. I just this happen to always have these Canadian teams on the show. I don't we know how that works out, it's right? Okay. We do. Well, we have a great connection. We've also done a lot with Warframe over the years. And I know right now, anyone watching. Here's this creepy Twitch Warframe Twitch person Twitch in the back doing show. creepy yeah. Warframe yeah. stuff. Right? That's right. I already have seen people getting it. Yes. So it's very exciting. She's right there, loud and proud. Protea. 30 minutes for watching. Thank you for letting us kind of take over oh. your special events category, but she is there and she is for you if you are properly linked up. No, Warframe, you know, as I said, we've done a lot over the years. You guys have done incredible things with the game. And I still don't understand it at all, Con but uh, we keep bringing July, it back on the sh these shows and... Uh, the year ...to reveal what's next. What, what can you tell us? Well, I can't tell too much, yeah. Um, but yeah. Because I don't know either. 16th, 2022, it's a digital event again this year. Uh, today, actually, we just launched the digital items for it, so you can get some in-game goodies, some really cool cosmetics, some merch, all that really great stuff went live today. But of course, the reason I'm here yes. is to, you know, kind of debut. We have our Tenno Live during TennoCon, which is our big reveal of the night, and we usually do a little bit of a, a gameplay, a little bit of a demo, and I think a lot of people can suspect what it might be, yeah. but I'm here to kind of confirm what it is that Tunnel Live is. We all know it. Say it with me. Can I say it? Yes, I think you can. Let's okay, all say it together now, because we all know. At the Deviri the Paradox. The Deviri Paradox, Finally, of course. I know, Jesus. I know it's been a couple of years. Uh, but Deviri Paradox is going to be what Finally. Tunnel Live is all about, and I'm so happy. Uh, the team worked really hard on the teaser you're about to yeah. see for it, and I'm just really proud and excited to show it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here on Summer Game Fest. Let's take a look at that right now. My child, my friend, what was done is done. New dangers, new choices await us now. What's this? Why is there a person in here and not a weird Warframe looking... What's what is Warframe? Can anyone tell me? I've played a few dozen hours of it. For now, <laughs> the fuck can I do? We were. Stark Sector. Okay, right. Okay, finally. Yes. Not the stranger's hood. Next, it's time for a new look at Honkai Star Rail, an upcoming open world space RPG 
Yeah, a lot of space today from Genshin Impact Studio, Hoyaverse across mobile and PC. This studio continues to deliver, and this new trailer reveals for the very first time a new and exotic realm players will be able to explore. I love new and exotic realms, and that's why I'm here. I like this style. I, I, you know, I like the look of this a lot. This is like in my head if you were to say, what if they made a sequel to Fantasy Star Online? I'd be like, oh, what if it looked like this? In the near future, you will encounter many perils. You will meet companions who treat you like family and embark on unimaginable adventures. I will remember what I feel in this moment. Yes, fucking shred, I guess. All right, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that they were just going to go back to back with a different game, but apparently that was also that That's game. That's not all from Hoyaverse. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Zenless Zone Zero, their next major new IP. It's a futuristic urban action game. I have to say I'm blown away by what this I've seen cool. so far. It was announced a couple of weeks ago, and it has the detail of Genshin Impact with a fast-paced action style. Here is the world premiere of a brand new look at Zenless's notable characters, armed enemies, and world of danger snap a world of danger Okay. All right. Eleven. It's like a... What if some people who liked... Jet Set Radio made a devil may cry. No, not really. But you know what I mean. That looks neat. I don't know. Like, yes, all those games are trying to blend together to the same game in your mind. I yes, I ag agree with you to a certain extent that. Um. One of my favorite reveals last year was TMNT Shredder. And that it'll probably end up being a big gotcha game and stuff like that. Like games back in the day. Well, it's nearing the end of development. And the team wanted to use SGF as a way to reveal one exciting aspect of the game they've been keeping under wraps until now. You can fuck the turtles. This really does look great. I, I hope it, I, you know. Me and beat-em-ups is a really 
tortured relationship. Six player, sure. Why not? Worked for X-Men. I do like the look of this a lot. This does look really nice. Like, I'm glad that it's not just, like, straight up. Like, hey, we just kind of took the Turtles and Time sprites and did something else with them. Like, it's got a really nice look. Well, I guess they really are nearing the end of development, aren't they? <laughs> One might say they're definitely done. <laughs> Well, I don't know, maybe it's, it was, I guess that's only if it's coming out on disc, right? Whatever, that would be cleared submission by now. Yeah, anyway. What am I even looking at? <laughs> oh, is this... Is this Saint? No, super. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. Wait. Don't. Don't bring a shotgun if you're flying through the air and shooting people from a distance. That is not the. All right. Well. Look, you do you. Is this the metaverse? Yeah. No. That's this definitely. <laughs> There's a vibe to this, like, you could be anybody you want in here. Final bait. I... Man, Sonic Frontier is looking even weirder this time out. Wait, there's more. A new seventh culture. How far will you push, humankind? What a weird... Sure, yeah, I mean, hey. Okay. Put it on consoles. Humankind allows you to shape your civilization by combining a multitude of historical civilizations from the ancient to the modern era. <laughs> One Piece is celebrating anyway. its 25th anniversary this year, and Bandai Namco is bringing the mega popular franchise back to video games with One Piece Odyssey. Monkey D. Luffy and his crew of pirates are off on their next adventure. This trailer reveals the setting, a mysterious island where Luffy and his straw hat crew become marooned in this exciting upcoming JRPG. The Straw Hat Pirates journeying along the Grand Monkey Line. Monkey Delufi. Look at that island! The sea is all over the place! What's that light on the sky? Oh! It's interesting! Let's go! Wait a minute! The sea is growing up in a strange way! Oh! 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 This is the knock-up stream. I was just thinking that. My understanding is that, uh... One Piece is the name of the treasure? 
that uh, that's what I've been led that's what I've been led to believe um what's the name of the guy oh, okay Matt Y says it's the name of the guy so it's just like it's is the so monkey Deluffy is the name of the treasure That boat, uh, that boat came out of the clouds there, and I was like, man, what if they made another Skies of Arcadia? And then I got sad. Unravel the adventure that awaits. In an odyssey beyond imagination. I can't even imagine what this would be. It's beyond imagination. Odyssey. Hello? The lady in my head is talking again. I don't understand her anymore. Soul Hackers 2 from Atlas Launches, and we've got your first listen to the English voice cast with this quick new look. Hey, forget about it. We're hacking souls over here in English. Cool-looking trailers for games I will play for 45 minutes and then go, oh man. So that's our mission then, save the world. With so many new games featured across SGA Boom. events, you might be wondering how to plan for your summer gaming dreams. NerdWallet can help you find the smartest credit card to reward your gaming purchases at nerdwallet.com. The Epic Mega Sale is going on right now. Save up to 75% off top PC titles with an additional 25% off eligible products. And it wouldn't be the Mega Sale without the Free Games Vault featuring Maneater. Be sure to claim your copy before the sale ends on June 16th. Tune into the Epic Game Store Twitch channel for our summer showcase on June 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. We're taking a look at new announcements and updates from PC titles heading to the store this year and beyond. And beyond. You nuts. Your home for all the newest games with only, I don't know, enough milliseconds of latency for you to notice. I brought, I got, can I, can I? I think the list of games of this got posted to Steam this morning, if I remember right. Uh, Suck it, plumber! You're gonna get hit with the unexpected in Mario Strikers Battle League! In this no holds barred soccer ish sport, chaos. Soccer ish brain. sport? So, <laughs> that, victory. Do you think a lot of meetings are like, we don't want to just call it soccer? Is this soccer ish sport? Soccer esque? 
Soccerish sport. It's fucking hilarious. You could just call it soccer, but with a twist. Hi, or is it like a? My name is Carl, and I'm a developer on Metal Hellsinger. Of course you are. Look at you. Really good. You feel compelled to move and shoot to the beat. But what if you had to? In metal, the better you are at slaying to the beat, the more intense everything gets. And we have vocal performances from legendary artists like Serge Tankian from System of a Down. Mm -hmm. So while headbanging isn't mandatory, we do recommend it. Our demo is live now on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation platforms. So go check it out and slay to the beat. That's, I, is it mean? I, I did not mean that to be mean. I mean, look at that dude's hair and then say, I'm working on the metal game. You're like, yes, of course you fucking are. Your black hoodie zipped all the way. Uh, yes. Did not intend for that to be a burn, and I apologize. I think um, the idea of a rhythm. A, a shooter with rhythm elements. Obviously, Harmonix tried that with that game that got canceled. Chroma. Is that Chroma? Is that what they're called? Um, weapons that either shoot only or shoot better on the beat and stuff like that. I think it's a really cool idea. And then in practice, it's like not that fun. I am always willing to uh, check out one of those and see if they've crack that nut but it's kind of just oh right bpm yeah that's right that's they did that um but it's i i yes i also wanted chroma to be good chroma was not chroma had promise chroma was probably never going to be some huge thing and right now as they mentioned a demo has launched it was a cool idea xbox and playstation Glad we've carved out our own little corner Next of the up, internet where we can talk about the Chroma Alpha. That never <laughs> from Supermassive Games. This spiritual successor to Until Dawn stars David Arquette and an all-star cast. It's getting great reviews, and this is one of those binge-worthy teen horror entertainment experiences teen what? where your every choice shapes your story and determines who lives and who dies at a camp. Where's Beyond Good and Evil 2? It's in a bunker somewhere. Yeah, it's... I don't know. You have to finish making it. You have to get out there and make assets and upload them to their platform and let them use them. But if your whole family, you know, like every last one of them decided to jump down the bottom of a well and they're all just hanging on the end of a rope, how can one person be expected to pull them all back out? Can't. Yeah, right? That's, yeah. We've all been there. Pull on that rope and you're just going to fall right down to the bottom of the well with the rest of them. So I said, fuck it, and we got some drinks. What's the point of that? <laughs> what? There is a lot more to this than you realize. Like what? <laughs> Kidnapping, murder, cover-ups. I think the whole Hackett family is in on it. You have no idea what's going on here. Not a goddamn clue. All right. All right, let's do this. Should I call? 911. You mean 911? Who says 911? That's pretty. That's, that's really dumb. I, that's 911. It's a really fucking stupid thing to say. See, this is why I'm a bad person because faced with writing that scene, not that I am some writer, I would have been like, this is a really good place for a 911 joke. Just have him say 9-11 have the guy looking go fucking what you know. back at the game awards we were proud to reveal nightingale a shared world survival crafting game from inflection games up in canada now it's time to give you a brand new look and deeper look at the game including its innovative man i should move to canada lets you impact things like the sounds awesome pattern, resources and challenges in this procedural realms here is your exclusive new look You're alone in the realms, I'm afraid. The portals are a mess. Uh-huh. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. 
boy. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, in case you had any, if you forgot what Jeff said before the trailer started, we're going to hit a rock and pick up some bushes. Arch is inactive. You'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. Okay. Foul thing. What's up? I'm Daryl. Waiting to get in. Be ready with your axe pick. I'm sorry, you can't just say it's an axe pick. It. Well, I guess if it's meant to be used as an axe, a pickaxe already is a thing. But axe pick. Okay, I guess axe pick is okay because it's meant to be an axe first and it also happens to work as a pick, right? That's the that's the distinction they're trying to make because a pickaxe is not... Oh, my fucking head, man. Okay. Okay, axe pick. The axe pick hype train rolls on. Pick. And all is mended. Level infinite's one of the ten cent. That's a that's ten cent, right? Saints that's like a secret March code word for ten cent. With the reboot of Saints Row that we revealed last year at Gamescom, and today okay. we're happy to announce there's that the boss factory the stuff. Boss factory demo across PC and console, which lets you design and set up your character. And since it's Saints Row, you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this one. Check it out. This is, I guess, smart for them to do, given how weird the criticism of the game got. That there's like, here, fucking, we'll show you the customizer. Fuck with it yourself. Jesus, people. It's almost as exacerbated. It's like, fine. Here. Download the character creator. We'll show you. It's going to be a, make what you fucking want. Leave us alone. We are so good at this. Seriously, this is perfect. Dinner and a show, baby. I think if you're providing the photo for the before and the after, and you're also making the video game, it's like, that's a little unfair. Am I gonna be able to make me? No, maybe. Will I be able to make this guy? Like, yeah. But they did that for the trailer, so of course they're gonna... Uh, hmm. Sorry, I don't... It bums you out how little you want to play this. I don't... I'm... I'm very hopeful because I have enjoyed Saints Row, but also I think it needs to be something more than it was, right? You can't just put out another Saints Row as they made them and have that hit. It's just like, I, I just, I feel like they hit diminishing returns with that thing by the end of it. And when they did those remasters, the re-releases and stuff, like I played them was like, oh, these were great games that I super don't want to play. And so at least having this look like they're doing something else, right? Or trying to do something different with it um, and take it into something resembling a different direction. So you're gonna restore the colon and okay, well, it looks like unplugging my third monitor did not fully fix the issue. So keep your fingers crossed that we make it through the end of this stream, damn it. I will have to... Um, set up some alternatives uh, as backups in case this is going to be an ongoing issue. So this is, um, this is, these, the, these are some hams. This is your war hammers. Maybe add a fourth monitor? That's probably actually the, the real solution. Prime the rods and send them where they're needed. 
Rods, check. I need to that guy's head up. The abilities and stuff look cool. Like that's like running through that corridor and going pop, pop, er, you know. Okay, Dark Tide. Okay. Bloober team is known for psychological horror games like Blair Witch and The Medium. Today, they are ready to reveal their latest creation made completely in Unreal Engine 5 for a visceral horror experience. It's a return to the world of layers of fears. Get a dose of this. A do Someone once said insanity runs in our family. A dose? Right. Haunted piano. I hate when that happens. I have a haunted synthesizer. You push the keys on it. It's they're not tonally right. Yeah, not space. Not interested. Yeah, you're right. What? Where did they miss the memo? The, these. This is space time. Space horror. Yes. Horror. Horror. No, thank you. All the underwhelming video games we've made. Shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. Strong uptake on the Unreal Engine 5. Okay. Fire doors. Giant skull man. Chains. Now I break free. Yeah, yes, Gerald. This this one's twist this will be October, that it's in space. Gotham Knights arrives. Batman is dead, and it's up to the Batman family, Spoilers. Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Robin, to protect Gotham. To give us an exclusive new look, let's you see that was it a Blu-ray, the Batman Blu-ray, where the quote on the front of it just says, "I'm Batman, Batman," <laughs> like they're quoting Batman on the front. It's real good. Hello and warm welcome from WB Games Montreal. I'm Fleur Marty. I'm the executive producer on Gotham Knights. Today, we are thrilled to share more with you on one of our beloved knights, Nightwing. Gotham Knights, this wait. This is the first in our character series, and we're really looking forward to share more with you as we continue like Wednesday nights. towards our launch on October 25th. You know, Friday night's so pretty I good. I hope you enjoy the show. It's all, I mean, Friday night's all right. Depending on what you're doing. Fighting or, you know, you know. I had nothing. And then this city became my home. Its people became my family. Gotham gave me everything. And then Batman died. Did you hear about that? It deserves to feel safe. <laughs> What's that guy doing? I'm just shooting this gun at this wall. Cause crime! That's like a Batman. That's a perfect Batman criminal thing to do. It's just fucking, I'm gonna stand here down here and go blah, 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 blah. Woo! Like that and like this fucking scene in RoboCop where they go around with the Cobra guns and shoot a bunch of stuff up. And now 
Just indiscriminate Captain violence. It's like, we've got to stop that. What's their goal? Are they criming? Are they stealing stuff? No, they're just criming for crime's sake. You can't crime for crime's sake. That's the worst kind of crime. I got this, Bruce. Because you're dead, by the way. In case anyone... Batman is dead. I have a stick. I have two sticks. And a posse. Two sticks and a posse. What more could you possibly want? That was Gotham Knights. And now we welcome... Oh, look who it is. Neil Druckmann from Naughty Dog. Uh, Co-president of Naughty Dog. Uh, great to have you with us, Neil. It's been a... Uh, an eventful day on the internet for Naughty Dog fans, I mean, and uh, yeah, the retail, the retail team really fucked us. I like watched the assets leak, and yes. lo and behold, that's what happened. Well, the good news is there's some stuff that hasn't leaked that we have lots to share with people about uh, all things at Naughty Dog. But first of all, it is a you know it's a big month actually for Last of Us fans because uh, Last of Us One and Two both launched in June, and it's nearing its two-year anniversary for Last of Us uh, Part Two, which is, is hard to hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, um, you know, nine years for Last of Us 1, two years for Last of Us Part 2, and we still hear from fans. They're still sending us letters and art, and these characters in this journey and this world mean so much to them. Um, and it's, it's just been kind of amazing. Like, Last of Us Part 2, early this year, passed a pretty big milestone. It sold over 10 million units. And that kind of support, that kind of success, um, we're so grateful to our fans. It has allowed us to grow as a studio, and now we can take on multiple projects, more than we've ever had at the same time. Multiple projects. Okay, mm -hmm. very interesting. So, uh, what can Last of, Us, Last of Us fans expect in the future from you? We've got a line of NFTs we're really excited uh, about. So, one of the things we've mentioned a while back is what started out as a multiplayer mode has evolved due to the team's ambition. They really wanted to do something beyond what we've ever done before at Naughty Dog. And we felt the way to do it justice is to make it a standalone title. And over the, they've been working on it for the past two years. Ambition has grown. And we're not quite ready to fully unveil it, but we're ready to lift the current a little bit and just give you like an update of where we're at. Okay, well, uh, what can you tell us about this new- There are two Joels. Yeah, so uh, we have a concept art that we want to show. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what I can tell you there Whoa. is that this game is big. Okay. Um, it's as big as any of our single player games that we've done and in some ways bigger. Whoa. It's got a story. Um, the way we're telling that story is very unique to this game. Um, it's got a brand new cast of characters. It takes place at another place, uh, another part of the United States. It's like a city might be somewhat familiar, some people. I'm sure our fans have already figured it out. Um, only fans could uh, possibly, only fans, oh, only fans of The Last of Us could possibly figure out where that Newman is. And, you're right. Uh, Joe Padnetti, all veterans of Uncharted and Last of Us, and you're going to see a lot more <laughs> of this game come next year. Next year, so we wait till next year to hear more next about that year. one. Okay, well, very exciting that uh, this has evolved, and I mean, that concept art looks incredible. I can't wait to see Naughty Dog storytelling fused with multiplayer live game. Uh, it's it's something special. The Last of Us one multiplayer was really ambitious okay, and neat. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge not fan of, of those games, but but like that multiplayer mode was every day it feels like really I'm fascinating. Really filming the Last of so, Us show for HBO, right? Cool. Yes, yeah, so, that's uh, cool. The, the idea that they're going to make uh, something even bigger and, and crazier. Like they should do that. That's neat. Fame and HBO to adapt The Last of Us into a TV uh, TV show. Um, they've been filming, and uh, it's pretty incredible. The stuff I'm getting back when we're looking at back at Naughty Dog, we can't help but feel emotional because not only is it so good and the quality is so high, it's so authentic to what we've made in the game, um, and. Uh, I just can't, I couldn't be proud of, like, again, Craig and that whole crew and everybody that's up there. Uh, and they're actually, their last day of filming is tomorrow. So the entire series, last day of filming is last tomorrow. Last day of filming is tomorrow. Craig is up there right now, wow. kind of wrapping it all up. Uh, so it's, it's pretty close. It's closer than you might think. And you actually got to direct one of the episodes? Yes, uh, I think that really speaks to the kind of collaboration and trust that exists between Naughty Dog and HBO. They invited me to direct one of the episodes. Um, I think we have an image from. So is that like director. count? If if this goes well, that's like countdown timer to him <laughs> so wow. going see, and doing uh, that full time, probably right. Museum that yep. players might know from the game. He's like, hey, I directed an episode uh, of a really television show and it went well. Pedro I'm gonna Pascal, go do Bill that. Ramsey, and not only directing them but seeing them do all the other episodes, they've thrown themselves at these roles um, for a whole year watching the nuance that they bring to these characters, their relationship on and off camera, I couldn't help but think Why about... Why he cut his hair? Hey, man, it's been a pandemic. It's People are fucking so doing things, you know? <laughs> those two actors had when we made the game. 
um, and it really feels like this is going to be Gotta change it up. something special. And I, I will say this will be the most authentic video yeah. game adaptation yet. Well, I mean, that first image that they put out, it just, I mean, it feels like Great. a video game. Everything that I've seen, both public and other stuff. We're really going to beat the hell out of this girl. Super legitimate, you said. And that's super awesome. authentic. See, uh, Jewel and Ellie from Great. the front side now for the Great. first time. Um, so we'll see more of that at next year that's coming as well, right, Sirius? Uh, you'll hear about it very soon. That's, that's okay. all I'll say right now. All right. Well, Last of Us HBO, very, very exciting. Uh, and I hear you actually have a couple actors from the show who are uh, going to join we us here. We happen to have a couple actors here that are part of who the Who told what? Okay. Up. Just a clicker walks out on the stage. Oh, what's up, guys? oh hello! <laughs> Surprise! Tro Troy's back again. Hello, I know. Ashley. Good oh, to hi. see you. Good to see you. Uh, I'm a little confused though. I, I thought maybe Pedro Bella, but Troy Ashley out here uh, from the game, right? So uh, when Craig and I started working on the show, almost one of our very first meetings, we said Troy and Ashley have to be a part of it, um, and we're such fans of like. The talent and the they like just, helping us create Joel and Ellie. Do they just play um, zombies? Like it was so important that they become part of the show. And it was. Or they? It has to be more than just like kind of like a wink to the camera okay. and like a cameo. Okay. These are real roles that we're keeping on the wraps cool. for now. That's uh -huh. hey, cool. Uh, I mean. But man, I was I'm bummed that I couldn't be there with you guys when you filmed your stuff. That, there's it's, been so much it's stuff. It's so I feel like so good <laughs> on the internet. There's so much like talk about what's being filmed, and I think that's you guys have kept a complete secret that you so you were up there and you you filmed your roles by now, obviously. Uh, well, keeping yeah. secrets yeah. with this franchise is kind of old hat. Like we've except had except for today, yeah. Yeah. Except, yeah. For the day. <laughs> except for the day. Uh, it was it was one of the hardest things for us to do is to let not let people know that because we're so proud of it and the work that we did. We worked hard. The the crew. I have to say, um, when I walked out on set. Um, to be met with literally every person that I met on that crew uh, is such a fan of this game, and they all knew what it was that they were working on and committed to working on this project because of their fan and their love for the for the game uh, was one of the greatest. It was like I was coming home to friends. Yeah, I, I the attention to detail, the crew was amazing. Bella and Pedro are Man. cool. I mean, I they're so. Perfect, and it it we we've, we've been trying. We'll see to how it does, right? I mean, sort of you hope that all this then funnels into it being a great show like, for people who like the games, and that's like always the, the hardest coming to audience life, to please, it, it, right? It's so much more than that. I feel like I can't fully explain it, but I am so excited to be a part of it, and just I can't wait to see it. I think it is going to be so good. It's it's. So I love the story. I love. No, just I, being I'm, a part of I'm so world. excited about the series and the fact that you guys are going to be in it and undisclosed. No, I'm excited. Fascinating how it's going to sort of. No, I'm excited. Bob and Weaven and, you know, are these characters we know from the game that they're playing? New characters? Can you tell us anything? <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> I can tell you. So sneaky. All right. Well, we're so excited. To Maybe it's already on Twitter by now. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right. Well, let's talk about what was on Twitter earlier uh, today. Lots of talk about uh, the idea, or really what's happening is it looks like you guys are remaking the original game, and this is like a ground-up remake. Is that right? That's right. Uh, we wanted to give people the definitive version. It's ground up, of scuffed. That wasn't encumbered by any technology. Uh, wanted to find a way to get even closer to our original vision. Uh, and we're able to do it on the PS5 and PC, and instead of talking about it, let's look at it. All right, let's take a look at the Last of Us Part one. So why'd you leave Boston? Oh, right. I watched this trailer earlier. I was like, oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. So the this video ended up, I believe it's this video, but a video ended up getting posted and the details of the game and price and stuff leaked out. So this is yeah, coming out September, and then they're also doing a PC version. The, the verbiage makes it sound like that PC version is not necessarily That's hitting in September. Is that everything you hope for? Can't be any worse. Because it just says PC version also. We're also doing that. No multiplayer, no sale, you say. There is something in the text, uh, if you were here at the top of the show, uh, that it says it comes with early in-game unlocks. And I don't know what that would be unless it included the multi. I mean, I'm not a Last of Us expert. Um, you know, maybe it'd be like, here's a gun you get eight hours in, and you just have it earlier or something. But that almost sounds like it would be a early multiplayer unlock to me. But I'm, I am only speculating there. 
I could also see them totally ignoring the multiplayer because they're in full development on a standalone multiplayer thing. That's actually probably way more likely now that I'm saying that out loud. Also in development for PC, so. <laughs> Crafting really resources, yeah. Yep, could be just be crafting yeah, resources. Your reaction to that? <sighs> yeah, we uh, hadn't seen that yet. Yeah, you're watching it in real time. Yeah. Uh, it's because you did these. I mean, these performances you did a decade ago. Yeah. You didn't go back in. I mean, you used the original performances. Yeah, right? actually, we we came up with a process where we could take the original uh, animation that we did for the faces and kind of like retarget it on these new rigs that have a lot more fidelity. And then the animators went back and We're studied. We're side by sides here, just how much it has changed. That you went and you redid the models and rebuilt everything. Everything was re uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, okay. Same art director, re art director, I mean, the whole thing from the ground up. Um, but the, the that PS4 remaster still like looks that. pretty good. Like they're they're um, doing these side by sides, and you go like, yeah, okay, yeah. But like that remaster, you look at it and go, that still looks good. That's on set than we could have achieved before. Um, and that's just like one of the things um, we could talk about, like this brand new AI, like all the comments uh, is, is all right. done. All right. All um, right. Just uh, the fidelity of everything, 60 frames per second, all the stuff you're getting on the PS5. Again, we wanted to give, knowing because of the show, because this, they're all, all new players for PS5 and PC, yeah. we wanted them to have the definitive version of The Last of Us. Amazing. Well, now you guys get to replay. I mean, when was the last time you guys played the game? I, I actually played it. I've never played it. And just to oh. refresh my memory before yeah. working on the show. Uh -huh. um, I was a just a glutton for punishment, and I went straight from playing uh, yeah, part never played one it. straight into <laughs> part two. Um, and so the last time that I played literally would have been two years ago since we're celebrating the anniversary of part two coming out. So, I mean, it looks like I'm definitely going to be up for another yeah, playthrough I can't, with I this. Mean, yeah. I can't wait to go back because oh, uh, you guys did such an amazing job on that original game. And it's, it's really when you play it, when you see it in motion, it's really yeah. night and day from what, what it used to be. So I imagine that, you know, the, think of The Last of Us 2 combat. But kind it's of like this stuff leaked, so we're just kind of like having well, some chit chat up here. Like, well, and animation and system, the yeah. Animation system, everything we've learned on like Uncharted 4, Last of yeah. Us 2, we apply to this wow. again to give that definitive version. Just to give a quick shout out, uh, this project is headed up by uh, Matthew Gallant and Shauna Sky. Okay. Uh, and you'll hear a lot more about it and see a lot more about it over the coming weeks leading up to the release September 2nd on PS5. All right. And well, shortly thereafter on PC. We will look forward shortly to Shortly thereafter. Talked a lot about okay. games directed by other people. What, what are you directing? You still making games? Still making games. Okay. Uh, I haven't given up my, my day job. Uh, yeah, it's a little early to talk about. Maybe if someone in place wants to leak it, then we can yeah. talk about it now. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll save but it. You do have a new project. Do have a new project, okay. uh, but we'll save it for another summer game fest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. We'll try and save it. All right. <laughs> Troy, Ashley, Neil, thank you so much for dropping by Summer Game Fest. And I am so excited that The Last of Us is returning, as you said, in September. So thanks, guys. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome. All right. Well, that is going to do it. Thanks to Naughty Dog. Oh, man. For that very when we are back live in Cologne, Germany. For well, we Game crashed Dog again. Opening night live on August 23rd. But, uh, and then the Game Awards will return in December live I, mm, Microsoft Theater. I've got a lot of work to do. And finally, I'm excited to share that Summer Game Fest will return on in hammering that out. 23 as a digital and in-person event to bring the gaming community together. Thanks for being a part of Summer Game Fest. It's an interesting little Remember, announcement to throw in the end there. Announcements to come. We'll see you soon. Right, doing it next year and it'll be an in-person event. Kind of saying it just like, uh, just like E3 did. It could just be Twitch. I, I guess it could be, but like OBS is literally locking up on my end. Um, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Day of the Devs. Day of the Devs. What? You don't know what Day of the Devs is? Day of the Devs is the greatest and oh, definitely Tim. the oldest independent games festival that exists. It was started over 10 years ago by Double Fine Productions and I am Pit to celebrate uh, the best independent games out there and bring them to you, the fans. We want to bring developers and players together to get together, play games, and have a great time. It used to be a physical event only in San Francisco, but now it has gone digital so the whole world can enjoy it. And we're really excited this year to be part of uh, Summer Game Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. So sit okay. back, relax, put on your party hats. This thing? I'm supposed to put this on? That's right. Everybody, put on your party hats. Greg Rice is very tall. Everybody. He's very tall on that beach. Everybody. That's right. That looks good. Now we're cooking. Put on your party hat and enjoy Day of the Devs. 
So I guess we've got a decision to make here. If you, uh, if we want to watch Day of the Devs, uh, I'm down. We got a new one today. Um, from a good friend, Michael Frey and Raphael Munoz. Previously, Michael made a game called Kids with playables that we published at Double Fine Presents. And this is his you want to do it? You want to watch it? All right, let's watch it. On Earth, told um, this is called Time Flies. I was just going to say, I mean, yeah, we're going to miss Time Flies here a little bit, but, um, everyone? the... It's got to be a bummer. I think when, when I crashed, I was talking about this, but like, what a bummer for Keeley to have that Last of Us stuff leak and have that be the show closer. Like, what a, just a, oh man, we got this big thing and then, pff, uh, fuck dude, that sucks. Um, you know, what are you going to do? That's the internet, huh? Is Microsoft on for Sunday? Yes, we'll talk over Microsoft. we're collaborating on is called Time for Um, Saturday, I'm going to go see some video games. And then, yeah, Sunday, we'll talk over. Yeah, uh, go to, it's, uh, what, patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. I've got my schedule of what we're going to talk over up there. Um, you know, we'll talk over Capcom. Time flies is about our limited time in this world. In Switzerland, where I'm right now, we have a life expectancy of maybe 84 years. In the US, it's about 77 years. <sighs> So you have a little bit less time to achieve. So fix your health care, Americans. What a bummer for that to be the show closer in the first place. I mean, you, you, sure, you're not wrong. Like a remake of, of Last of Us 1 is maybe not the... Um, most scintillating reveal even if it hadn't nice, leaked uh, things you can but achieve are nicely prepared on a bucket list uh, this is a very small part of that bucket list uh, so these are the things you can do in the world This seems neat. Something about that bucket list uh, reminded me of Don't Shit Your Pants, the achievement system in Don't Shit Your Pants. Where it's almost like, a, here, are the, here are the goofs we came up with. Die from getting drunk. Die from the record player. Die from... coming to PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Mac The uh, Bibble. sometime next year. <laughs> uh, please visit timeflies.bus where you can... This is a really good, like, newsletter. hey, it's Day of the uh, Devs. This is a really good presentation. Out. Really nice, uh, lo-fi, fun. Link to the Steam page where you can wishlist the game. Thank you. Don't I know it? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So if you're joining us late and you're wondering when the archive of this will go up, obviously it'll live on Twitch a little bit, but then, uh, you know, because of all the crashes, and I'm sure there's more to come, um, I'm gonna have to take a little bit of time to cut it all together, so, uh, who are these enigmatic enemies? Who are they indeed? And what other secrets are there to uncover in this beautiful, boundless environment? Hello, my name is Adam Stjernius, and I'm the creative director at Wishfully. We're a small indie game studio in Sweden, making Planet of Lama. In our game, you play a young girl called Lana, who is forced out on a mission mm -hmm. to save her sister that has been taken away by an invading robot army. 
Early on in the game, Lana meets the mystical creature Mui. Yay. You quickly develop a strong bond and friendship to Mui, and she proves to be both intelligent and loyal. Hello. You could have just walked over and done that yourself. Being her own personality, Mui also has things that it's an adventures she of cookies and cream esque. No. <laughs> but being small and agile also has its advantages. For example, being able to reach places that you can't. She also has this special ability. Not since Army of Two or 50 Cent Blood on the Sand have two players or one player and an AI worked together so well. I assume 50 Cent Blood on the Sand is the inspiration for this. I, I you know, like when, when Tony Ayo jumps up there and then holds his hand down and lifts 50 Cent. Right now at Steam or sign up at our newsletter at planetoflana.com. Hi, we're back again. This next title from Two Star Games. I'm going to totally an on the rails shooter. Uh, you and your rip OBS apart, with its mounted uninstall all of it, get it off my system, off and then reinstall it. Clown face train uh, is hell bent on devouring human flesh. Interesting. This is Choo Choo Charles. Choo yes, this this I'm is Choo Choo Charles. I'm a solo developer behind Two Star Games, and I'm currently making Choo Choo Charles. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Right. This. Right. It's an open world horror game where you navigate an island in an old train. Upgrade it over time and then use it to fight an evil spider train named Charles. And think about that sentence. An evil spider train named Charles. Is this just the the if you um button to his face that'll probably encourage him Like the to what the Bowser Island DLC it was like instead of just gigantic Bowser, just Charles comes for you every so often. And you just have to wear him down over time. You have one goal above all else, and that's to summon Charles to a 1v1 and fight him to the death. To do that, you'll need to explore the open world, looting abandoned areas and completing missions for the locals to gain powerful new weapons and scraps that you can use to upgrade your train's speed, armor, and damage. Okay. You need to leave the relative safety of your train and venture out on foot. Never get out of your trench or your train. This is where things get really dangerous, with Charles constantly roaming around looking for his next meal, and camps of shotgun-wielding cultists looking for someone to feed to him. That's, that sounds, I mean, that sounds dangerous. Spider train and then people who love the spider train. That's, yeah. Of course, some faction of cultists are going to be like, actually, we think the spider train is a lot smarter than you. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we worship the spider train. We think spider train has a lot of interesting ideas. After collecting three heavily guarded gems from abandoned mines around the island, you'll place the gems on one of the shrines, angering Charles and drawing him to your location. The spider train is just asking questions about, you know, how many spam bots are on Twitter. The spider train just wants to know. That's all. Yeah, is it, this seems like something that's maybe designed to be replayable. I don't know. Wise to wander too far from your train. If you do encounter Charles while you're roaming around, it doesn't matter what you do now because you have truly angered the beast and you'll either escape with your life or see it flash before your eyes. Well, ah, that's bad. That's bad. I feel like this 
interactions between Charles and the player could be a little more interesting there than like him just for bumping you, you forward. Sure to follow but wish list Choo Choo Charles on Steam, I'd greatly appreciate it. it really does. Wait, coming. Wait, hang on. <clears throat> I'm sorry, coming early 2022? It's very personal and near and dear to I Am 8-Bit because it's a I Am 8-Bit Presents published title. It's called Escape Academy and think of it like Hogwarts, but for escape rooms. It's from developer Coin Crew Games and they hail from the arcade amusement space. They've designed escape rooms in real life. Better they talk about their game than me. Here they are. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. <laughs> oh, Wyatt, you goofball. Wait, am I supposed to say I'm the... <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. We're the founders. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Oof, okay. This is... Uh, I hate that. All right, one, once, once more with feeling. <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle. And we're Coin Crew Games. Nailed it. When Coin Crew Games was founded, uh, we were actually building real-world escape rooms and arcade machines, but when the pandemic hit, we needed to pivot. So we decided to take those learnings, building real-world escape rooms, and transpose them into a digital format, and thus Escape Academy was born. Good luck trying to hack me without sufficient power. Probability of your expulsion, high. Escape Academy is an escape room adventure game that you can play either single player or co-op. This is just something really weird about play the idea of virtual titular, video game based academy, escape rooms when you, you think about escape rooms as almost puzzle solving and trained you know video game esque puzzle solving in really? real life. It's a like having that all reflected back to onto it again is We're all fans of escape rooms. So when we uh, couldn't find a digital authentic escape weird. room experience, we decided to make one ourselves. Not bad, just weird. Walls are often misleading at the Academy. Escape Academy isn't just a puzzle game, it's an escape room game, and it brings that play pattern home. We have a huge amount of puzzles in this game, and they never repeat. And in addition to that, you can solve every puzzle using just your mind, no dexterity required, although you may want to bring a paper and pencil. Oh, so the, enough dexterity to bring a, use a paper and pencil, I see. I get you. This isn't in VR, it's a missed opportunity. I, it does not look like a VR game to me. It looks like something that could be, for sure, but... ...support the narrative and put players in situations they would never find themselves in in real-life escape rooms. When this is, we were designing the game, it was this really just video game puzzle solving. This is are you experience of both playing a lot of That's something that could be in the next BioShock. Is sort of a so is this design anchor. So is to, this. To so is that. I don't mean to say that's bad. I just again, it's it's just a really strange Sadly, that would be no help in bypassing my lasers. We really took our time to create an eclectic cast of students and faculty members that help guide you throughout the academic journey of Escape okay. Academy. Some cool story stuff, maybe? Building on the lessons that you get in each room and raising the stakes throughout your journey at the Academy was definitely a design pillar we wanted to make sure came through in the final game. I am not, not feeling so well. Analysis. I have succumbed to disco fever. Escape Academy is coming to Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. So now I want to see them take this, take Escape Academy, and build it as a real-world escape room. Let's keep this going. Let's just keep this going. The Academy. Thanks. Escape Academy. This so this, we need something for the end of this trailer. How about someone yelling Escape Academy? Absolutely. Nailed it. Called Max Inferno, and it's a game about getting things lined up just right. It's called A Little to the Left. Huh. 
Hi, I'm Annie. Oh. Hi, and I'm Lucas, and we are Max Inferno. Yep, and we're really excited to share with you today a cozy puzzle game that we've been working on called A Little to the Left. Cozy is a good word for whatever is happening here. Okay. I was like, wait, is this some kind of trippy, weird FMV puzzle game? Because I'm all for it, but no, that was just their fun the intro. It's a game where you sort, stack, and tidy up the house. Hmm. In each level, puzzles are hidden among regular household objects, and you solve them by arranging items in a very particular way. Okay. All right, yeah. Many of the levels have multiple solutions. It's all about observation and imagining the different structures that could be at play. The game takes inspiration from our own home. You should see our and Nintendo our tapes. They are everywhere. Another big source of inspiration for the game is our cat, Rookie, who should be around here somewhere. Occasionally, this cat will show up on the periphery of your gameplay and undo your tidy work. What? Just to shake things up a little bit. That's not cool. The game starts. Get that cat out of here. <laughs> But as you progress, disable. The can I turn off cat? Becomes a little more I like cat. Don't get me wrong. Surreal. There is a lot to tidy up in a little to the left. Actually, every day brings something new. With the daily tidy delivery, you get even more out of our huh. favorite puzzles. I and you earn fun badges too. This seems neat. Well, thanks for stopping by. This seems neat. We hope you enjoy a little to the left when it releases later this year. See you later. Bye. Very chill. Switch and PC. I've been excited about this one ever since it was announced ages ago. It's from developer Gummy Cat. It's called Bear and Breakfast. And the, the title says it all. You're a bear, you run in bed and breakfast in the woods, and it's really freaking fun. We're debuting a brand new animated trailer, a bunch of gameplay you've never seen, and finally announcing a release date. Oh no. Oh no. This is cute. Oh. I'm Ioana. And I'm Radish. We're from Gummy Cat in Romania. Today, we're showing you our first game called Bear and Breakfast. It's a laid-back management adventure game where you build and run a B&B in the woods, but you're a bear. It's pretty straightforward. In Bear and Breakfast, you play as Hank, a young. There was a demo of this, right? There, I, Valley, I don't know that I. In a small home with his mom and two best friends. Yes. We grew up on management sims. Uh, Games like theme hospital. Ramon in the chat wanting to play a game where you work at a DMV for bears and you are a bear. That's that tells a story let's hope that this leads to a full on em em employed bear averse. Sometimes 
So it turns out that humans are coming back for some reason, and they need a place to stay. There's old, rundown buildings all over the place, and you're just the bear for the job. Pawn voyage, sure. The game follows a linear story that you advance by solving quests. A lot of them involve finding materials, building rooms, crafting furniture, and decorating stuff. Hmm, this seems neat. The actual furniture you do make awards different kinds of points. For instance, beds give comfort, showers give hygiene, that type of thing. You have to make sure that your room scores are high enough to satisfy whatever your guests are asking for. Mm -hmm. Each type of score comes with its own challenges. For example, later on you'll need to cook food for your guests through a minigame. There's a lot more to Baron Breakfast. I like the look of this overworld. The, since the game won't rush you. Some of the task solving stuff. Oh, and there's stuff. definitely no creepy subplot hidden somewhere in the forest. Oh, come on now. We we're very excited to be part of Day of the Devs this year, and we can't wait to introduce you all to Hank and his friends when Baron Breakfast launches later this summer. Thank you. Okay. Relatively soonish. I feel like when it comes to any of these games where it's like, um, hey, you, you can aesthetically do kind of whatever you want here as long as you meet a minimum number of, uh, you know, your comfort level, like whatever it is. I just, I, I always tell myself like, oh yeah, I'm gonna really get into designing, but no, I hit the bear, the bear. <laughs> well, let's back that up. I don't wanna Woo! say a lot about this next one. I hit the minimum and then move on. I, I, uh, mystery that are best I rarely on get own. into that it's full a on game from a studio called Shared Memory. Uh, it's a pixel art Metroid aesthetic Vania, design thing. Creatures. It's called Animal Wealth. Hi, I'm Billy Basso. Today I'm going to be showing you a game I've been working on called Animal Wealth. In Animal Wealth, you explore a surreal and sometimes dangerous pixel art labyrinth that is filled with secrets. As you explore, you'll encounter uh, various creatures, but it's not always clear if they're friendly or not. So it's best to proceed with some amount of caution. Oh, that's, well, you don't, hmm. Get your various suit on and come back and murder that Probably dog. And you're gonna find various items that will give you new abilities and help you solve some puzzles. Oh, God. I don't like the look of that at all. Creepy wiggly cat. Come on, what? Every item in the game has multiple uses, but you're going to have to experiment if you want to figure out what they all are. That's a cool idea. This looks neat. Animal Wall is a pixel art game. Uh, that's not just a pander to nostalgia. Instead, I'm viewing it as a technical opportunity. A 4K TV screen has 144 times as many pixels, but that means I have 144 times as much processing power to apply to each pixel. Throughout the game, you'll see a lot of things like fluid sims or dynamic lighting effects that haven't really been used in a pixel art game before. Designing animal wall is a layered experience. So what that means is the base layer it's is- It's got a URL on the back of that uh, screen there enjoy to completion. that I'm afraid to but type in because of how crashy everything has been. 
just kind of don't want to touch the computer while this is going on. Items, um, uh, in nooks and crannies throughout the world. They're not obvious, and they you might need some help to find these. The third layer has puzzles. What it's animalwell.net slash fountain, I think is what it was. It might go unnoticed for years. Did I ever check out Noida? Yes, I've, I've played, played quite a bit of Noida. Yeah, you're right. This this is, this is Noida-esque, and you talked about uh, fluid dynamics and stuff like that. Like video that may yeah. require some collaboration to understand but so he's got a the first time box art for Picross. Uh, we'll get a free copy of the game at launch he's got a url and while you're doing that you can maybe wishlist it uh, but yeah thank you so much oh you didn't mean oh you mean the guy yeah no yeah Cool lighting, I, I, whatever. I think as soon as I saw the frisbee in action, and God, just don't show me the creepy ghost cat. Um. No, oh, well. Hmm. Next up is Nyad, a colorful exploration game where you play as a water nymph traversing a zen and peaceful world. This game comes to us from High Warp, a solo developer from Spain. Hi, I'm really Friggin happy ghost to be part of the 10th anniversary Creepy. of Day of the Devs, a Creepy. exciting Sound of Edition. I'm Elwin from High Warp, a solo dev in the studio from Spain, working on bringing to life very unique and personal games. I would like to say with you a preview of Naya, a relaxing and colorful exploration adventure about flowing by our river. I put all my love creating every part of this game, so please enjoy. Hmm. It's just something about a nice looking top down game sometimes, you know? Uh The journey starts with the birth of a little water nymph at the spring of the river. Naya will grow up and mature, obtaining vitality from flowers. This is an ASMR video also? I... Flowers, learning to swim like a duck, dive like a fish, dash like a frog, finding other adorable friends like I... butterflies, rabbits, snakes, turtles, cockroaches, and much more. Help them to find their way, avoiding obstacles and dangers, using your skills. You will immerse through a lot of beautiful places like a deep forest, a dark cave, a joyful creek, and more. Water symbolizing life start pure and fresh, and little by little it will be fading into dark. You can sing to regenerate the nature, making sprout flowers in the path. And you must do your best, because the humans hmm, are controlling this river goal. Humans create their own fake rivers, like these noisy roads with strange smoke creatures. Strange smoky creatures. River, and that seems to be a difficult task, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because You've just got to sneak up behind and choke sky. out all the humans to stop them from the killing your world. It's like it's vitality. Just like weird transition to stealth action. You just got to lure, sunrise, you got to sing to lure the humans into the water and crack their fucking and neck. Creating Nayat, I focused on a wholesome experience. Enjoy it at your own pace, exploring and flowing. Nayat will be available for PC and consoles by the end of this year. Thank you for watching. Uh, Monko asking, what is Greg's Rice, Greg Rice's role in, at PlayStation? I think he is heading up a lot of indie stuff um, as part of like, what is it, like the platform management team or if whatever it's called? But, for the good old days, yeah, I believe he is. A trip back to the Stone Age, um, it's a cooperative life and farming simulation game from Soda Den and Cryptico. Hunt and gather to care heading up a lot of indie initiatives and, and that sort of thing, I, I believe. Best of all, become a friend to the mammoths. This is Roots of Pacha. Hi, I'm Timo, co-founder of Soraden, along with my brother. Hi, I'm Karen, the narrative designer. 
We're based in San Diego with the rest of the team in Argentina. Hola a todos, I am Dancer, the main artist. And I'm Johnny, Timo's brother. We are the team developing Roots of Pacha. A farming scene set in the Stone Age where you help your clan develop the ideas that shape humanity. In a time when there weren't stores to buy seeds or anything else, you build your village from the ground up. Instead of using money, you'll transform the world around you by contributing. Glad to see Greg Rice is maybe less afflicted with the permanent thousand yard stare of a project manager who has seen Starting some shit. Small, says too much. Yeah. Of this new land. Greg Rice, every time I see that dude, he seems like he is in a good mood. Good hugs. Many of the ideas you develop were the cornerstones of, Out of Greg Rice. Like farming, domesticating animals, and the creation of tools that are now common. Ideas will build on one another, and after a while, you'll find your community transformed. Okay. Some irrigation. I like the look of this. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of stuff happening. You'll venture into the caves to meet the spiritual world, to try and explain who you are and why you're here. I'm going to talk over the Devolver thing. I'm, I'm not going to talk over the Devolver thing. Um, I kind of stand fast on the notion that, like, cracking jokes over their jokes is just not... You know, like, I, what am I? I'm gonna step on their jaw. You know, I'll just. The game it'll just be me sitting here nodding my head, and going like, "Oh, that was uh, that was somewhat funny. That was not funny. This one was very funny. Like, it's it's not. You know, Devolver. Roots of Pacha is set in simpler times. But does its own thing. Still complex. For sure. For example, um, finding something to eat. Yes, exactly. Like talking over an episode of Mystery Science, you just wouldn't do it. You know, riff or riff. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? The Devolver thing, I think, is later today, right? As you discover ways to make life easier, I never watch. I've I never watch their stuff live. Well, usually because I'm offered. like busy with other stuff. Um, I probably will be busy with other stuff today as well, actually. But but I, I will try to catch it clan, before the podcast on Tuesday. I still need to hammer out what time is a good time to start a podcast on Tuesdays because uh, that's a decision I, I get to make again. And uh, I want to say my wife has a dentist it's appointment on Tuesday morning that might contribution to the genre. impact that as well. So time TBA for this uh, for this first. week's next week's meantime, podcast. A brand new demo that just went live today. Thanks for having us. Muchas gracias. But I will try to get uh, a proper time hammered out and permanent for that. I'm going to go see a dentist as well. It has been a while. What is the new podcast called? It's called The Jeff Gersman Show, a podcast about video games. It should be on now, uh, almost every podcast platform by now. It might not be on Google yet. They were dragging their feet, the but it's been spreading Rocky, around Monument Valley, since Tuesday. Alma, and a bunch so it should be out there. Really, really cool games. Here it is. A lot of games uh, that you just like, you watch these trailers and just go. Atlas Two Games, we really try to make meaningful and great about games and deliver that to everybody. So with Monument Valley, we make people care about a character for the first time if they've never really engaged with games very much. And with Albro Wildlife Adventure, we took open world games and packaged that into a kind of theme about saving an island that more people are going to want to engage with than just the hardcore. And with this game, what we really want to do is take these genres that we really love, like roguelike games and turn-based tactics, add a little bit of sports game in there as well, and themes about dreams and conflicting fears, and really package that together into something that feels really unique. Uh, the other thing I'll say game, is, if you want to know the schedule, I have been posting it to Patreon, so you can go to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman for that. Relationship with their mother, uh, their family, and and their that's where, you know, the, the, the rest of the streams I'll be talking over for over the next few days here. Uh, I've posted that stuff, and so head over there and you get more details. Unfortunately passes away, and they don't have those tools and that person to lean on to bridge that gap. Gonna stream on so YouTube. We'll see. Not this week. This um, I'm 
And when Looking they try and fall asleep that. with it, they find themselves in a world between. You need to figure out the technical end of it, but also like the business and end of it of this, like. They explore these moments, these memories. Is a Twitch affiliate? Can I even do that? I don't know. I got to go reread some stuff and figure some stuff when out. When they do so. that, they find the right words to say to confront these people. The people we're going to be meeting in Desta's dreams are people who were significant to Desta before they left town a couple of years back. And there are lots of people they don't know quite as well, too, and some people who have been shaped by Desta's impression of them in their dreams, but they've all had profound impact on Desta's life. These characters are really interesting because all of them are interesting. Channel points, rewards. Yeah, this is story, hey, but also with each other. There's a long list of they stuff that I got to get done. But uh, they really feel like a part of the makeup of Desta's background. One way or another, the people that Desta meets throughout the game help Desta become who they are today. And they've taught Desta a number of different things, like standing up for themselves, taking risks, expressing themselves, and more. There are a few different themes in the story, but I would say that certainly loss is a big part of it. Finding yourself, courage and perseverance, and reawakening. No pun intended. You know, someone wants to show like up with a uh, whole bunch of cash for an exclusive streaming for deal. Desta. I mean, um, hey. the same is true for pretty much all of our games, <laughs> but Desta in particular is very personal to a lot of the members of the team. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to some of the themes of maybe having ghosted a friend and not being sure how you could like get back in touch with them or dwelling over how you might have said something in a conversation and like having that play over and over in your mind, which is like one of the core themes of the game. It's definitely got more depth and more game mechanics than anything we've made before. And I, I live, I live that. I don't know that I need a game that really does that. I'm telling you more about Desta, the memories between in the but. coming weeks and the coming months. This next game is called Shim. Uh, it's a shadow platformer. You're a little blobby character platforming around inside shadows in a game with a really cool minimalist graphic art style. I hope you like it. I'm sorry, did he Hi, say Shrim? I'm and I'm the developer of Shim. Oh, Shim. And I'm Niels from x okay. and I help Ewald develop Shim. We're located in the north of the Netherlands in a town called Leeuwarden. We are a team of two, plus the talented people at Moonseller, who the audio. Schim is a game where you move around in shadows. You play as a schim. Oh, a weird. Shadow creature. That's... Hmm. As a whole, schim is made to be approachable for a variety of players. At its core, it's about jumping around in shadows and platforming towards the end of a level. Oh, that's... Huh. Each shadow has their own schim. player plays around as a schim of a human. Okay, I was wondering However, if you were gonna... This schim is separated from that person, and it's up to you to find your way back. I have to deal with moving shadows. Figured you'd have to, right? In the game, you will also help other schim characters who have also been separated from their shadow. You can help them by finding their object. Got a bike! Schim takes big inspiration from the feeling of playing as a child. Playing imaginary games with made up rules. Move around in shadows and jump to the next shadow. I mean, why not just wait for nighttime, honestly? This looks really cool. I like the style of it. it. It's yeah. It looks like when you're on a moving thing, you will automatically move and don't have to like keep up with it, which is nice. Oh, check it out and follow us mm. at schimgame.com. Perhaps that. Hi everyone. Has its limits. Thank you, Jeff, that is driving us this year. I'm Anne, the manager of Asobu, a community hub for indie game creators in Tokyo. We have a space where people can come to work and meet other people, do small gatherings. And we are helping Japanese devs by introducing them to platforms, console publishers, helping them on marketing, or as usually they don't speak English, helping them to apply to overseas events like this one. 
And we're also doing a lot of online contents and streams, uh, like our big Asobu Indie Showcase, which will be aired this summer in English and Japanese, or our monthly stream in the collection, and podcast, and many other things you can check on YouTube and Twitch. But first, uh, let's check two really cool Japanese titles. Let's! Fox and Frog Travelers, The Demon of Arashino Island, is a 3D action adventure game with a Japanese inspired atmosphere. You will play as Fox, her girl who finds herself on Arashino Island and starts traveling with Frog. As one does. Tori Gates, who stole lantern and neon, gives light and color to the island. But something is lurking in the shadows, inching even closer. Hey lady, hey lady. Hey, 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 gotcha. Ah, oh jeez. Fox and Frog Travelers is developed by Rias, an illustrator and concept artist that came up with the idea for it, based on one of his illustrations. Oh, I don't like that. I don't, mm. No. Fox and Frog Long Journey Through the Night is planned for release in a few years. A few years? What? A few is three! Showing me games that are not going to be out until 2025? Sometimes if you know, a, f a couple is two, a few is three. There are rules! Goodbye World is a narrative game about two young and in-game creators, the Shai Kani and the extrovert Kumade. These so-called pixel art graphics. Ugh. Mixing influences from comics like Ghost World and games like The Beginner's Guide or Moses 3, Goodbye World is a tale about the passion and struggles that comes with game creation. Through 13 chapters of the story, rendered in beautiful pixel art in a resolution close to the like Part of this looks like a bootleg Kirby and then it's got some other stuff going on. That's kind of neat. <laughs> Goodbye World is due out on Steam later this year. If you like those games, don't hesitate to wishlist and to follow the dev on Twitter. And if you are interested by uh, Japanese indie scene or indie games, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, on Discord, chat with us and watch our indie game showcase, which is uh, coming this summer. Cool. And thank you again for watching and Day of the Dev for having us. The process of moving to a new city can be daunting. So our true. Next game, Birth from solo developer Madison Carr, who hails from Chicago, explores the idea of quelling loneliness through this puzzle adventure. Hi, my name is Madison, and I am making a game called Birth. Just drag and drop that from them fish. Birth All right. A point and click puzzle yes. Game about living alone. Plant in Plinko. Shape. I'm into it. In order to quell your loneliness, you decide to create a creature, a friend, a partner for yourself by collecting spare bones and organs that you find while traversing the city. That's how we did it. You will explore libraries and post offices and museums and cafes and apartments that don't belong to you. Full of a bunch of spooky weirdos. In each of these buildings, you will meet creatures and you will get to know them by searching through their personal belongings. <laughs> I'm rifling through their shit. Saying deal with it. <laughs> 
their laptops and phones, their cabinets and their notebooks. Within these personal belongings, there are puzzles. Some are physics-based, some are pattern-based, uh, some are abstract. Man, I no got behind the clock and there's more creepy bird skeleton ghost things back there. Alongside the main game, there are optional hidden tokens that you can find to unlock secret buildings and treasures. Birth comes out this August. I made this game with my whole heart, and I hope that you like it. Out here collecting weird bird eyeballs. This looks neat. The creatures creep me out. The creatures creep me out. In our next I'm, I feel okay. I feel okay five, saying that. Play as the ghost of a person who's recently died and is embarking on the journey of accepting their own death. The mechanics <laughs> underscore the message. Crazy, huh? Anyway, you may get stuck, but you can always stop, reevaluate, and keep moving. It's all just part of the puzzle. Hi, I'm Florian co-author of the upcoming narrative puzzle game, How to Say Goodbye. You don't really hear people use the term author when it comes to game development very often. I think it's an interesting way of phrasing it. In How to Say Goodbye, you help a group of quirky ghosts overcome various obstacles and conundrums by reorganizing the level as you like. I, the, the look at all the movement and dragging and stuff, like that stuff looks really cool. Moving one tile will also push the surrounding tiles. Like that tile, that, that tile movement. This thing lives or dies by how good that tile feel is, right? That's kind of neat. The puzzle elements are only moved around, but never removed. So, just like a Rubik's Cube, the puzzles never end up in a state where you can't solve them. Imagine this with HD Rumble. That's Gigamir. That's a good point. Follow this is like a, if there was a really good, satisfying click on the controller as those tiles moved. Oh, that would be. Oh, that'd be cool. How to say goodbye tells a story of like some really solid dual sense support would be pretty killer. Kind and positive. It's a really weird thing to say, but it is, you know. Just some hot haptics. Why are we getting creepy text? What's really go oh, is there if this sounds like something that you would be interested in? Please wish this the game. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you. Yeah, the text just gets weird around those black holes on the bars. That, that looks very cool. I... Oh. Hi. Well, wasn't that a great show? And a great cake, and it's all gone. And so now we have to say goodbye. I hope you liked that. I hope you liked all the games. Thank you to all the developers for making such fantastic Thank you, games. Tim Schafer. For, for just being Tim Schafer. Special Schaefer. thanks to all of our generous sponsors. You've always been there for us, and we could not do this without you. 
PlayStation, Idea Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, Epic Games Store, y'all are awesome. Thank you. Extra special thanks to Dose One, the Magic Man, for supplying all the beats and sound effects and tunes you hear in every summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs. We couldn't have done any of this without nice. you, or at least it'd be really quiet uh, and kind of suck. We're not done with the Day of the Devs 10th anniversary just yet. If you go to dayofthedevs.com and sign up for our newsletter, you will be amongst the first to hear about all the excitement that's to come this year. Uh, other than that, thank you so much to everybody who watched, and we'll see you next year. Bye. We'll see you next time. Aha! You thought it was over, but it is actually not. Day of the Devs continues with a special after-party performance by the one and only Peter Berkman of Anamanaguchi fame. He's debuting new music from a game you've probably never heard of. It's called Little Nemo and the Guardians of Slumberland. And the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's debuting on Kickstarter. At this Making a new Little Nemo moment. game? Enjoy. See you later. Thanks for tuning Making in. Making a new Little Day Nemo Day game? Day Summer Game Fest edition. Bye. They're making a new Little Nemo game? All right. I don't. If you want to watch that performance, the, this performance, you should watch it. I'm not going to talk over the Anamanaguchi guy. Um, cool. Uh, let's come back to me. That's me. Hello. Here I am. Well, that was uh, quite a day of streaming, I suppose. Um, Hmm. What was the highlight? What was the highlight for for you? What was the what was the big highlight uh, out of out of all of this stuff? I went in wanting to see some more Street Fighter, and they sure showed it. Uh, yes, the the highlight was uh, rebooting uh, OBS seven times over the course of the day. Um, Goatee Guile. Yeah, time flies game. Yeah, uh, time flies looked really cool. I was well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Midnight Fight Club continues to look awesome. Um, let's see. I'm going over my list here. You know, Witch Fire looked okay. I, I don't know. Like Witch Fire, I'm still feels like something that could end up being good. Getting a date for Neon Whites. That's cool. Um, all the Day of the Dev stuff looked nicely. Cozy, I think that uh, cozy but sinister. I guess right. Is that the thing now? Is that the like ever we we can't have a just a a genuinely cozy game. We've got to have secret ghosts in it, or hey, this game's about ma making peace with death or something, and uh, like like all that sort of stuff. Like what? I I don't understand why we why can't we just have cozy things? You know what I mean? Yeah, the Hoyover stuff looked pretty good. That's a good. That's a yeah for sure. Um. That Cuphead DLC looks uh, very nice. I don't, you know, I don't know that there was much in there that I would go like, ah, this looked like garbage, or you know, there's, there was a, uh, you know, some stuff I'm probably more like, I'll definitely play this, and some more stuff that I'm like a little more on the fence about. See, yeah, Dark Tide Snow in the chat saying Dark Tide. Uh, that's a, a perfect example of like that's a game that I looked at and was like, this looks really cool, but I'm not usually into the Warhammer stuff very much. Um, and so uh, that is something I feel like, you know, you kind of just have to see a little bit, um, a little bit more of to know for sure. Even the aliens game, which normally be like, Oh God, why are we still doing this? Are we still making like whatever aliens games? But then when they're like, Oh, by the way, it's top down. You're like, okay, well shit, I guess I'm, I'm potentially on board then. Because you're not making just another standard ass first or third person shooter. Like, here's another co op thing with the aliens. We know one of those just came out and was kind of shitty. I, perhaps shitty is a strong word for for that aliens game. I don't know. But uh certainly yeah, it was fine. Yeah, I guess it was it was fine. I don't know. I, I played the first three levels of it and I was like, I don't want to see any more of this thing. I'm super <laughs> super done uh with it. Solid B tier game. It seems like it would be like a fine game pass game. You know, you get your friends together and just like fucking shoot through it and and whatever. Um and and do your thing. But uh 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a decent day of announcements, I guess I would say. Um, and we'll kind of see what's to come. Uh, I feel like, you know, Capcom's going to obviously have their event and uh, maybe they'll have Dragon's Dogma 2 there? Do you think they're actually going to do it? Can I cr can I crawl all over even bigger monsters? And it's just the crawling looks so creepy in that... Ugh. Um, you know, obviously Microsoft will have their stuff and we'll see what they, what they put together. Am I going to play any of the steam demos? Uh, yeah, potentially. Sure. I will look and kind of see what's up. Um, right now I kind of only have the schedule through to till the podcast on Tuesday. Um, but we'll kind of see what's after that. I think the pending other streams and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, probably live like Wednesdays, Fridays as well. Something like that. Still kind of locking down the exact schedule and all that sort of shit. But, um, but yeah, thanks everyone for, uh, for joining us. Uh, and by us, I mean me here on the internet. Uh, if you want to find out more again, if you want to see the schedule of what I am looking to stream next, it's on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Jeff Gersman, Pat bear link into the chat. Thank you, Pat. Um, and we'll be back uh, soon with more of that. I again, I don't, I, won't, I don't want to load up. I don't want to touch the computer because everything fucking crashed so much. Um, so yeah, if you were looking for the archive of this stream on YouTube, it'll end up there eventually. I have to carve. I have to take the six different videos that this thing spit out and make sure that they all uh, aren't super fucked up and uh, and so on and so forth. And if they are super fucked up locally, then I'll have to pull the archives off Twitch. Da, 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 da. You know how it goes. Maybe you don't know how it goes. That's how it goes. Everyone have a fantastic Thursday. I have been living this entire day going like, oh, Saturday morning. For some reason, I can't get over. It's for some reason in my mind, it's just been Saturday all day. I don't understand how that happens. Um, but yeah, Saturday, I'm going to go um, play some video games. I'm going, I'm going to go to Los Angeles and play video games. That's my big plan for Saturday. So see you soon. We'll talk over. Uh, we'll talk over Microsoft. Um, also, Saturday is when the Rumbleverse thing is happening too, um, and I I, I want to play some Rumbleverse. If it, my schedule works out with the the stuff I have to go into LA to see, if I can get some Rumbleverse in before that, I would very much like to. Um, or you know, it's twenty four hours, so maybe I do it after. We'll see. Have a tremendous rest of your th Thursday, and uh, I'll see you right here soon on Twitch or YouTube or, or wherever, I don't know, Patreon. Uh, again, I'll, some one of these days I'll get jeffgersman.com or some, what, I own a bunch of domains. We'll throw some shit together. It'll be an easier way to follow what the heck is going on around here. Cause I, it's very ramshackle. Damn, son, where'd you find this? See you, dude.